instruction. Last time on I'm trying not to sound like a conspiracy theorist as I do my best to, I guess, explain the entire lore from the past year of this goddamn Minecraft roleplay server, I gave a brief introduction to all the characters, all of the factions, uh, Tales of the SMP, LaCaste, and uh, you got a brief look at uh, just how much we're covering with the timeline. And then we went all the way from before Tommy in it uh, up to where we are beginning now, which is Reconstruction. This is a time of relative peace where the members of the server are picking up the pieces after the bombing of Lamanberg and then the uh, we... wither explosion Sorry. by Technoblade. What's up, Rio? Did, did we talk about J. Schlatt just kind of dying of his own accord? <laughs> I, yeah, I think this I, was I, sorry. I was, so was kind of half there. <laughs> That's okay. I went so far as uh, specifying twice that it was written directly into the script. Jay Schlatt has a heart attack and fucking dies. Beautious. Don't you worry. So at present, as we reopen our story in the Reconstruction era, uh, the only canonically dead characters we have at the moment are Jay Schlatt and Wilbur Soot. So, where do we begin after, you know, uh, Lemanberg has its first big explodey wody Well, first and foremost, we have first. a couple new players. Sorry, what was that, Chloe? First, first. big explodey wody First, big explodey wody Yeah! People, people <laughs> like to joke that the three Aww. canon lives thing applies to Lemanberg as much as the characters. It does. Aww. It's got three X's Wait, what on happened? The flag. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Each X is a life. <laughs> Each X is a life, and Lemanberg lost all three of them. Oh, okay. So, uh, this, this is a couple lives down by this point in time. <laughs> so, um, our new players for this era, in addition to Phil's of Minecraft and Connor E. Pants hopping in at the very last moment in the last era, we have Captain Puffy, Vicstar123, Laserbeam, and Rambo. Reconstruction is a time where peace is pretty relative, but compared to the absolute shitstorm that was Manberg versus Pogtopia, this is pretty nice, except for El Rapids. They do crimes. Uh, El Rapids is essentially a terrorist organization. I mentioned them very, very briefly on other factions that existed once but aren't really too applicable to the story, uh, but for brevity's sake, we had skipped over that. Just trust me on this one, they are hilarious, but also blow shit up just cuz I guess anyway uh, so in the wake of Wilbur Soot fucking dying the Tubbo administration is tasked with rebuilding Lamanberg and Technoblade retreats to the Arctic Tundra to avoid punishment for his war crimes and destruction a group called the Butcher Army is formed to hunt them down the Butcher Army consists mainly of Quackity, Fundy, and Tubbo but at a later point technically includes Ranbu However, Phil's of Minecraft, despite being a member of Lemanberg, is aiding Technoblade from the shadows. Ghostbur, the ghost of Wilbur Soot, but, you know, nicer and a little bit less homicidal, appears and begins helping to decorate the new Lemanberg. Uh, an important item that changes hands is Tommy entrusts his last remaining disc, Mellohai, to Tubbo. The funeral of Jay Schlatt is planned by bad boy Halo, and it was a fucking mess. So what happened was Bad tried to hold a memorial service for Schlatt because unlike Wilbur, who, you know, had a friendly ghost version of him appear, nothing really happened to Schlatt. So Bad was like, oh, let's just lay him to rest properly and nicely then. Um, except everyone showed up and just trashed the place because, you know, he was a shitty leader and a bad man and he had people publicly executed, which isn't cool and that's fair. Um, but like... They they busted open his coffin um, and, like, stole his bones and shit, and Quackity also ate his heart. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, it, this- Okay. This, yeah, it was a lot. Someone someone took a spider eye and named it Jay Schlatt's heart, and that's what he did. <laughs> My that's personal amazing. Favorite, it was amazing. My personal favorite thing is- um. Quackity busted out his guitar, you know, played a few notes, and then just started shredding on it, yelling, that bitch is fucking dead. Um, it was a good time, except for the parts where it wasn't. Uh, our, our memory boy, Rambu, joins the server one day, and literally the day after he first logs on, 
Tommy in it in um, convinces him to uh, go rob um, George Not Found's cottage. You know the the funky little mushroom uh, hobbit hole I told you guys about yesterday. Um, they go to rob it, but they also end up burning it down by accident. Oopsie doodles. So the the big problem with that, in addition to you know arson not being as poggers as we all think it is. Um, is George is technically the king of the SMP at this point in time. So, you know, arson of royalty is really not what you're uh, looking for if you want to keep up the peace in this incredibly fragile time period, right? Especially And the then... staying alive. Huh? I said, and the staying alive. Yeah. So the, the, the super, like, scary thing about Reconstruction for, you know, the new administration of Lemanberg is Dream got everything he wanted post-war, because Manberg and Parktopia are gone, and Lemanberg itself is still too weak to do anything productive to stop him from pushing the others around, right? Because if you look at Lemanberg... Their PvP skill roster without Technoblade is kind of middling at best compared to Dream and Puns and Sapnap and even George to an extent, who are all kind of fucking freaks, right? Uh, just to clarify, who's in who's in Lemanberg at this point? Um, at just, this, I don't know off the top of my head. At the very beginning of the Tubbo administration, Lemanberg consists of Tubbo, of course, Quackity, Fundy... Tommy before his exile and Nikki Niachu and Phil's of Minecraft. Those are your primary citizens. Although Ranbu joins up pretty quickly as well. Also, oh, Phil's is not Sorry. actually a yeah. Phil's is Lemanberg. No, Phil's he, is working. For... He is a member of Lemanberg. He's just keeping an eye on Techno. And then after the things that we will get to, he says, "Fuck this place, I'm out." Based Phil's. Oh, okay. Phil's best Minecraft. arc, by the way. Just letting just letting Chloe know this is the best arc. No, Nikki Niachu's arc is the best arc. <laughs> Oh, I okay, I haven't seen that Minecraft. yet, sorry. <laughs> anyway, anyway. So, to avoid retaliation from the greater Dream SMP and Dream himself, for the most part, Tommy admits that he was the one responsible for burning down George's house. He is put on trial and is then put on probation until further sentencing. In the meantime, the Dream SMP walls off Lemanberg with multiple layers of obsidian, and there are guards surrounding the city ready to attack anyone who's attempting to leave. The city is effectively under siege, and Tubbo is pissed because Tommy had one job, and that was, don't fuck around. He has fucked around, and now he is finding out. Another Ooh. really strange thing that uh, Dream decides on um, is that uh, he dethrones George because behind the scenes, George decided he didn't really want to be part of the lore in that way anymore. And Eric gets recrowned, much to the in-character uh, irritation of Goggy and Sapna. Um, to kind of prevent any further hostility, Tebo makes the decision to exile Tommy, and as a result, the walls are removed. Tebo is, again, a lot smarter than people give his character credit for. He knows Lemanberg is far too fragile to fight in another war, and he does not want to attempt it. So, goodbye, Tommy in it. After that, we uh, kind of jump into a fan favorite arc, Exile. There are no new players at this point in time, and I like to describe this this as uh, it's Castaway plus Little Shop of Horrors, because this is also the era where the blood vines begin to uh, pop up all over the server. So, um, Tommy, you know, being banned from civilization for the most part, needs to have a place to live. So him and Gosper found Logsedshire, which is a, basically it's a campsite, uh, built out of logs uh, by Ghostbird because Ghostbird fucking builds everything now. Uh, and every day, Dream comes by to psychologically torture Tommy by stealing all of his items under the threat of execution and then burning them or blowing them up in front of him. This kind of, uh, how do I put this, abusive treatment begins to uh, emotionally and mentally unravel Tommy in it. He cannot return to more populated areas on the server under threat of death. And for some reason, people aren't really coming to see him as though they don't really know what's going on. Um, I don't have this up on the slides, but um, Gosper makes Tommy and Tubbo a compass called Your Tommy or Your Tubbo for each of the boys that points in the direction of wherever the lads are. And that's really, really sweet. Uh, and if I was just like a little bit more emotionally capable, I would probably cry. Because like, hey, 
they're pissed at each other, but they still care. And that's nice. Uh, another major, major uh, seed that gets planted for the current arcs right now that gets planted is um, Sam is contracted by Dream to begin construction of the prison, a.k.a. Pandora's Vault. We will see a lot of this place later on. Meanwhile, Bad Boy Halo discovers a strange red substance around the server, and he doesn't really know what it is, so he leaves it alone for further study. However, over time, he starts to develop this strain, the strange and extreme protectiveness over this. The strange red substance is the origin of the egg slash the bloodlines, and the main body of it is in a place called the Egg Chamber, in a, a cave that was originally dug out to be the base for the Dreamin' Hunters that never got used. Bad converted the unused space into a room where he was going to make little miniature statues of everyone on the server. But then, oops, egg happened. Um, at some point during this time period, in an effort to frame Eric for murder and to get George back on the throne, El Rapid stages an explosion that kills Carl and takes one of his canon lives. And I cannot stress to you enough, this amounts to absolutely nothing. Oops. So those strange red vines begin spreading in certain places on the server, and Bad starts to get very, very irritable when people attempt to remove them. Ant Frost also seems to fall under its influence, and the two claim that it speaks to them. This influence eventually spreads to Punk and Puffy as well. Meanwhile, back in exile, Tommy begins to hallucinate that he's seeing Tubbo appear around Logstedshire, but no one else can see him. Uh, and one day, while looking for turtles, Technoblade confesses to Phil's of Minecraft that he has been hearing voices that compel him to violence. Uh, those voices are Technoblade's chat. He just wanted to make them canon. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, te Technoblade's chat like is canonically all of the voices in his head. Like he just hears yeah. shit, and he's it's just like, "Oh yeah, no." I, like, well, it's I canonically it. techno schizophrenia. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's amazing. Another chat that got canonized recently is uh, Philza confirmed that his chat is just like a murder of crows that follows him around everywhere and squawks at him all the time, uh, and I think that's hilarious. Um, so uh, Tommy wait, and Rambo like have been unrelated. exchanging. Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> I wasn't sure if I was actually talking. If my, my push to talk thing wasn't working for a second. Um. What was I gonna say? Oh yeah, I, I I misspoke earlier. The other I, I I thought the other arc was the arc that I was the arc that's actually coming up. I, I I the other arc is not the best arc. I did misspeak. It's okay. We'll get there. We'll get there. Don't worry. Don't worry. Sorry. I just wanted I just wanted to make that clear. Sure, sure, sure. So Tommy and Rambu have been exchanging letters with each other, and the general gist of them is that Tommy is feeling worse and worse and worse, and no one's really coming to help him. And also, Rambu begins to suspect that Dream is somehow sabotaging their communication with each other because he's noticed that their letters back and forth have started to go missing and there's not really much Rambu can do about it because you know he doesn't remember things um during these letter exchanges tommy begins to build a bunker to stash weapons and gear and hide them from dream who you will remember is um you know showing up and burning his shit every day um i need to preface this next point by saying that bad and skeppy are like as characters basically married. I'm not doing a ship thing here. I do not care for the idea of shipping real people. I think it's pretty fucking weird. But canonically, these characters, one, live together, and two, it has been stated by both of them quite a few times that if one of them loses all their canon lives, the other one just wants to be dead too, so they don't have to live without each other. Uh, and three, eventually everything bad does surrounding the egg is to be with Skeppy again. We'll get to it. But, like, these characters care a lot about each other. And I think the only other characters who have this same kind of relationship are maybe, like, Phil and Techno and Tommy and Tubbo. Like, very, very close to each other. Are there so, the um, ones that are married? Mm hmm is, Isn't someone, like, platonically married? Oh, uh, yeah. This? Um, uh, Carl, uh, Sapnap, and Quackity are technically a thruple or ah, something yes, yes, yes. yeah and that's sweet um so skeppy is kind of pissed that bad has been prioritizing this fucking weird egg thing in the basement more than him and so he you know gets angry and he covers the egg up in obsidian um and that temporarily kind of breaks the influence this weird parasite thing has over the group of bad puppy and like, you know, 
the gang, uh, and they begin to try to dispose of what vines have grown. Bad then proposes that, you know, we should keep the egg covered because, holy shit, I can think again. But Skeppy then misinterprets this as Bad wanting to protect the egg more than he wants to protect Skeppy. So Skeppy, you know, breaks into the egg, recovers it in an obsidian, but he ends up trapping himself inside with it. So, you know, Bad and the others kind of have mental clarity, but they know that they can't open up the obsidian to get Skeppy without falling back under the egg's influence. So they just kind of have to leave him for a bit. Um, also, hey, <laughs> you remember how I mentioned, uh, like, way back in character introductions, how Safnap was uh, hunting down Abu and his new pet fox squeaked for, like, a solid 20 minutes? Yeah. That happens the same day as this. Uh, Squeak's conflict is my favorite. I know we talked about it 33 slides ago, but I, you know how it be. It's a funny time. Um, it's That's actually kind of amazing. It, it's, God, fucking Squeak's conflict's so fucking funny, dude. Um, so it's around this time period as well that Nikki and Funny kind of take a backseat to main uh, lore and they go to um, establish the city of Dry Waters, which also ends up taking a back burner later lore wise. But um, that's just what they're doing now, in case you're ever worried about why I'm not mentioning these two characters who popped up a lot in the previous arcs. Um, so the day after that, Bad then returns to get Skeppy. Uh, he notices, however, while he's down in that room, that the obsidian covering the egg has been corrupted and is now crying obsidian. He gets Skeppy out just barely, and uh, Skeppy, who is normally that kind of diamond blue color, is now, like, fire truck red and has completely lost the ability to feel or, like, interpret human emotion. Bad, who is incredibly close as, a, like, another character, is absolutely devastated by this and resolves to do literally anything to have his friend back. Meanwhile, back in exile, <laughs> Mexican Dream, you know, is one of the only characters other than Ranbu and Gosper who has come to visit Tommy at this point, and Dream murders him in front of Tommy three times, enough to take all three of his canon lives. So if we could just have a moment of silence for Mexican Dream, I would, you know. Ripperoni and pepperoni. <laughs> Ripperoni in pepperoni. So sad. Uh, so the day after the three canon deaths of Mexican Dream, we... Well, you, want, you want me to say a little prayer in Spanish for Mexican Dream? Do you want to Please say a little do. prayer in Spanish Please for Mexican do. Dream? <laughs> Apparently Cole wants me to. Sure. That's so okay. funny. Uh, I'm trying to... Fuck, do I remember our father in Spanish? I know I was taught it at one point. Uh, Padre Nuestra... Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre, venga a nosotros tu reino, hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Buenas Amen. noches, sweet prince. <laughs> See, Buenas noches. You, you have the Spanish knowledge, but not the religion knowledge. <laughs> yeah, which is the, the opposite of what most people would have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was probably wrong. Oh, well. <laughs> I apologize I mean, to anyone who actually sees this. Anyway, yeah. uh, so so <laughs> the next day uh, we see the second visit of Drista to the server. I didn't mention the first one because it wasn't more relevant, but the second one is for some reason. Um, so, you, you know, the Drista visit is supposed to be Tommy and it's kind of last hurrah. Like, yeah, this is my last my last friend who's willing to come visit me, Dream's younger sister who wants to stab him in the eye with a fork. Uh, and Drista does some pretty fun shit uh, during this time period, including giving puns a shulker box. Um, the other important thing she does is she uh, convinces Dream to let Tommy go see the Christmas tree that puns uh, put up back in the SMP, because uh, this is all happening in December, most of this arc. So yeah, Tommy got to go back home one time to see Christmas. Puns got some sick loot. I'm pretty sure Technoblade picked up a copy of Pigstep because Drista went into creative mode and just started handing people shit. <laughs> we love her. I know Techno has a has an end rod, so I imagine that's where it came from. He also Probably. has a bedrock. Yeah, oh he yeah, he also has, has a one of two pieces of bedrock. Yeah, Tommy has the other one, I think. Um, so the day after that, Techno and Dream meet up. You know, and you know, Dream says, "Hey, man." Butcher army's coming for our asses. 
but he also gives Techno a map to a woodland mansion. And this is a really, really important interaction to mention, because not only are players not allowed to go to the end, but the server is also set in easy mode. This means that villager raids don't drop totems of undying, and so that means that all objects from the end, like shulker boxes and totems of undying, are extremely rare and extremely valuable. Totems especially, because being able to canonically dodge a cannon death is kind of inval invaluable when people are, you know, killing each other left and right. Technoblade walks away from this map with two totems of undying. Based. Damn. Based and epic. So later, Dream <laughs> finds out about Tommy's gear Best bunker, up. and in a fit of rage, he blows up all of Logstead Shear. In, like, a state of despair because Tommy had been stockpiling all that gear for, like, a few days now, and now it's all gone, and he's back to square one, and Dream's even angrier than he was before, Tommy towers up the build limit and just kind of stares out over the world. Like, he's actually kind of contemplating just dying and losing his last canon life, but his one last fuck you to Dream, he decides to live. And then he makes a fucking break for it. And he winds up finding Techno's cabin in the Arctic. But, you know, Technoblade and him kind of, you know, a little bit of a rocky relationship. So he hides in the basement like a little raccoon. Around the same time period, the Butcher Army begins its hunt for Technoblade. Uh, the Butcher Army, again, consists of Quackity, Fundy, and Tubbo, technically plus Rambu seeking to punish Technoblade for his part in the destruction of Lemanberg before the Reconstruction Era. This group finds out that Phil's of Minecraft has been aiding Technoblade, and they go to interrogate him for information. Phil attempts to insist that Techno has turned over a pacifistic leaf and that he has no intention to do further harm, but the Butchers don't believe him. In response to, you know, Phil's excuses from their point of view, they ransack Phil's house, and eventually they find a compass that points them towards Techno's house in the Arctic. Phil is placed under house arrest for aiding the enemy, and the butchers set out for their target. As they're leaving, Phil does his best to warn Techno that the hunters are coming for him. Techno receives the message just in time, and he prepares for a fight. Ghostfur, who's just sort of been, like, wandering around since Logstead Shear exploded, um, comes across this group. And I just want to say that um, Dream was the one who sent him off to wander around. Specifically, he wanted him wandering around in the rain. Ghostfur is, you know, a ghost, so as far as series lore is concerned, that means it dissolves him, like water physically hurts him. So basically, Dream just told him to go die. He told Tommy and its only good company that he had yet to murder to go die, because he's evil. I cannot stress this enough, Dream is super fucking evil, dude. So, uh, you know, Ghostfur running yeah. around the woods ends up running into the butchers, and since Ghostfur doesn't remember anything negative, he doesn't register that this is a revenge mob coming after Technoblade, so he leads them right to Technoblade's house. Enter Technoblade's execution conflict. I wish we could watch this um, <laughs> fucking animatic, but like we can't, there's no audio for you guys. So the execution conflict is a super good stream. We know that the audio stream. still doesn't work. It's uh, yeah. so good. Checked, like, I, 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 I'll probably, I'll actually DM the stream to you, Chloe. Yeah, it's a it's, really good stream. It's a great stream. You could literally watch the stream from anyone's perspective, like Tubbo's, Quackity's, Technos, whoever the hell you want. It was good from all sides. Um, <laughs> really, really good drama. So this is, the execution conflict is technically a 4v1, but since Ranbu is openly the entire time not on board with hunting a man down, it's essentially a 3v1. Techno could and was winning the fight that they had once they clashed up in the Arctic. Um, but Quackity then threatened to kill Technoblade's prized horse, Carl, with a C. Uh, and this had bearing on the plot because there was a donator who was giving Technoblade a hundred dollars per stream that the horse survived. <laughs> so there was no fucking way that Technoblade was gonna let anything bad happen to that fucking horse. So Technoblade yep. surrendered. <laughs> it's the only reason he gave up fighting. Like, I, I want to specify, Chloe, 
this wasn't just like a like a like a like a gang of like rascals trying to take down Technoblade. These were people fully geared in Netherite wielding diamond axes. Like who in a three on a three on one in Minecraft is a situation you generally do not win. <laughs> Technoblade was kicking the shit out of them. <laughs> it's it's Dude, such a good when, stream. When he gave up, he was on nine hearts. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was still, like, he still had all of his potion effects and everything. Like he couldn't just like yeah. <laughs> the plot demands it. Anyway, everyone shut up. I'm teaching. It. Sorry, I, I, so, I love that stream so much. So, in order to protect Carl, because <laughs> you know Carl's the one who's actually at risk here, Technoblade surrenders and he is ordered to give up his weapons and armor, which he does. But he's also holding on to a shit ton of golden apples and also one of his totems of undying. Because how do you verify that, you know, someone's inventory is actually empty? Techno is told on the way back that he is going to be put on trial for his war crimes where he will be given the opportunity to defend himself on the stand. But instead, he is immediately brought to an execution chamber. The butchers are planning to drop an anvil on him. As Tubbo begins to give a speech about Techno's crimes and what that meant for Lemanberg, Hans shows up out of nowhere and starts throwing down TNT, which distracts everyone. Quackity still manages to hit the lever to drop the anvil, but Techno cheated death with his totem. Dream then secretly guides Techno back to the final control room, which you will remember is the room where Eric betrayed Lamanberg in, and gets Techno partially re-geared with a bit of iron armor and a pickaxe. Quackity then catches up to Techno and the two fight, and since Techno is kind of a fucking freak at PvP in this game, He's able to win with just a pickaxe, and he offers another one of, like, the really great lines of the series, which is, I'm gonna take this pickaxe, and I'm gonna put it through your teeth. Uh, so this is another canon death Do you want to know quackity. what that pickaxe name is? A toothpick. He names the axe Toothpick. <laughs> um, toothpick? So the animatic I want to show you of the scene is by YouTube user Skywars because it, it, you know, kind of clears up the audio that you had while they were fighting. And also the animation is just really, really smooth. But like, we can't do that today. So just know that it exists and maybe watch later, I guess. So, uh, you know, the butchers kind of have to reconvene after Technoblade's escape. And they put two and two together by, you know, realizing that if puns was interfering like that, that means Dream is somehow involved. Keep in mind, Techno was the only person who saw Dream there, not the Butchers. And they resolved to instead try and kill Dream, because despite their independence, Dream has been perpetually keeping them under his thumb. They proposed to organize another festival in Lemanberg and inviting Dream to it. Due to the rules of not being able to wear armor in Lemanberg, Green Man would be extra vulnerable to an assassination. After the meeting, Tubbo finally decides to go to Logstadshire to check up on Tommy and maybe catch him up on all the wacky politics he's missed. But when he gets there, he sees a bunch of craters and then a tower up to build limit. There's no sign of Tommy anywhere, and Tubbo is left to infer that Tommy's dead. If the explosions that clearly occurred did not kill him, then it's evident that he jumped. Tubbo passes out. Uh, it was the super dramatic cut to black in Tubbo's actual stream, which was really, really striking because at the time, like, the streamers hadn't considered pulling shit like that yet. Like, you know, Ranboo's character wasn't doing his full lore yet. Um, we as the audience know that Techno, or Tommy is just, you know, burrowing like a fucking raccoon underneath Technoblade's house, but as far as Tubbo is aware, his best friend is Permadead, and the last conversation the two got to have with each other was Tommy screaming as Dream dragged him away. The fandom artists and the writers kind of had a field day with this one, um, but for the next few weeks- I imagine. He, I imagine, yeah. For the next few weeks, anyone who does not see him directly is led to believe that Tommy in it is dead. So Techno returns home after this attempt at execution and finds this little raccoon boy in his basement stealing his shit. So Tommy explains the last few days of him running away, and then he reiterates to Technoblade he wants to get his fists back, um, and there are, like, people out there who just don't immerse themselves in the story enough to, like, get Tommy's obsession with the discs. And they are like, that's a stupid motivation. Who gives a shit? Uh, and to me, that states that they've never had to bullshit an English paper about symbolism before. Um, and if they have, they're really bad at it. So, like, on an in-universe level, the discs are kind of some of the only objects that Tommy has ever legitimately gotten on his own this is a character that's kind of notorious for stealing shit and also constantly losing any good item he's gotten 
So he's super protective of these because they're a badge to show that on occasion he is capable. Secondly, and pardon me for writing an English essay here, but symbolically, if you want to make the ha-ha funny Blockman roleplay deep, like a D&D campaign, then you just kind of have to think about the only times when Tommy busts the discs out. It's either to enjoy them with his friends or to use them as a bargaining chip to protect people he cares about. He and Tubbo sit on the bench, they watch the sunset together, and they listen to them. It's an important activity in their friendship. It creates a positive association between Tommy, the discs, and the people he cares about. The discs equal happy times. He also gives up these prized, highly sentimental items of his for the sake of his friends. Tommy giving up the discs. Uh, oh, no, okay, you're here. Myself. You cut out for a second. You're good, pal. Uh, Tommy giving up the discs equals Tommy giving up his happy memories with his loved ones. They mean a lot narratively and sentimentally. And if people don't understand that, I'm just going to assume they got like a C plus in freshman English, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so, you know, Tommy's like, I want my shit back, right? And Techno's like, hey, these dudes just tried to execute me. I think the government has corrupted your friend Tubbo. Let's blow up La Manberg once and for all. And Tommy and Techno, despite their history with each other and their very different objectives, team up. This couldn't possibly go wrong, right? Despite Tommy stating multiple times he really didn't want to see his former home destroyed in any capacity and Technoblade saying he is going to destroy his former home in any capacity possible. Like, it, it, oh, it really God. is amazing how they were like neither of them were like, oh, maybe, maybe this is a bad idea. Maybe like maybe you should build a different idea. house. Like, <laughs> maybe like I should like I don't I don't oh, he's the other seems really like entrenched like they're gonna in their stick with their guns on this. Yeah, so uh, Sandy Armstrong, by the way. We're having two... our um Minecraft lecture right now. Um oh, he's he's muted now. <laughs> oh, goodbye. So yeah, um a lot of people are like, this is a miscommunication. And I'm like, no, they hurt each other. They just chose to ignore it. These two actually do have a miscommunication later, and I will speak extensively on that when we get to it. But as you, I, I'm really trying to imply here that like this alliance is absolutely set up for failure. Um, what, what did that Oh, for certain. Yeah, no. <laughs> so we begin a new era as Tommy and Techno create a new alliance together. We are entering the era of vengeance and disunion. The new players we will be seeing towards the tail end of this time period are Foolish Gamers and Hannah Rose. So, Technoblade wants revenge for the execution, and the Butchers have a new target in Dream. What could possibly go wrong? Also, the egg's still here. I don't want you to forget, like, while the exile conflict was happening, Little Shop of Horrors is, you know, just going on in the background. So uh, one day on a visit up to the Arctic, Rambu learns that Tommy is alive, and so the boys and Techno hang out. It's a really, really sweet dream. Techno gears Tommy up a little bit, and, you know, Rambu, as he's talking with Technoblade, is like, maybe Lamanberg's a little bit bloodthirsty. Um, dream and Puns also meet up with each other near the prison, and I, kn- I mentioned once or twice, like, Puns is one of my favorite characters in, the in like, the story. Um... And I'm really, really happy with a thing Puns gets to do later lore-wise, but I don't know how much I can actually trust that action because of the conversation that these two have here. So there are a couple key points of discussion. Dream acknowledges that Puns has been one of the most consistently loyal people to him on the server because Dream is actually capable of paying Puns. And remember, Puns is $20 is $20. And so he's willing to trust Puns with the following information. One, Dream knows that the Butchers are likely coming for him next, especially because they saw puns and the two were kind of like thick as thieves. Two, Dream knows that Tommy's still alive and he is actively searching for him. And three, Dream is planning something very big and he needs to figure out a way to get every single person on the server to hate him. He's planning to be ousted somehow, but in his absence, he wants puns to be nominally in charge as his spy. Uh, to reiterate, the two of them are having this conversation in front of Pandora's vault, you know, the big scary prison, where they are also discussing how many people it can hold, and where and to what levels of security there are. It's foreshadowing, baby! Uh, the next day, Dream oh, yeah. just kind of shows up at Techno's house, 
looking for Tommy and like these streams are legitimately very, very tense because we know Dream is absolutely out for Tommy's blood. And he was methodically searching Techno's cabin the entire time he's there. And Techno had splashed Tommy with an invis potion. But because of how slow Dream was going, there was like a legitimate concern that the invis would run out and he'd find Tommy there. Like the rest of the stream was really lighthearted. Like Tommy and Techno were creating their army of dogs and Schlatt and Connor joined the like call with them and they just bantered and goofed off. But that first half was so scary. But, uh, but um, also, don't yes. forget, Kring Theorpe. Kring Theorpe? Yeah, Tommy made a to-do <laughs> list in Techno's basement, and he spelled a bunch of shit wrong and also wrote down shit only Tommy would do. Uh, and Techno had to just fucking, like, improv <laughs> Just pretend that he had written half of that shit? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you like, like, one of the, the dream. One, one of the, yeah. Because dream was like, I know Tommy's here. This is clearly Tom, or was here. This is Tommy's to do list. Techno's like, nope, that's mine. And dream's like, really? You have a to do list that includes get Minecraft GF. And Techno's <laughs> like, look, Twitch stream. And dream's like, what about Kring Theorpe? Techno's like, yep, that's mine too. And he's like, Techno, you were an English major. You know how to spell went, therapy. Techno went, I Techno went out into hard. To play Minecraft. Yeah, and I dropped out to play Minecraft. And besides, it's a hard word to spell. Anyway, uh, the day after that, you know, Dream is relatively convinced, as far as we know for the time being, that Tommy isn't there. Um, but the day after it, Ghostbird accidentally tells Dream that he is seen. Tommy near Techno's house and like, oh, fuck, dude. Uh, the day after uh, Tubbo goes to hide Techno's items beneath the Holy Land, you know, a place where no one can die, uh, Dream showed up at Techno's house again to try and do lore, and Techno just kept reading his donos anytime Dream was trying to speak. <laughs> I love Techno Blade so much, dude. Te Technoblade has like no respect for Dream. It's so funny. Like, <laughs> he has no respect for anyone like, he, other than he, he Phil's he a knows... Minecraft. Are you kidding me? He, yeah, he, he knows he he's a little the only character for... on the SMP that like that Dream okay. just cannot beat whenever he wants. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, the power. Yeah. He's very he aware of his power. He Nikki a little bit, but that's besides my point. Anyway, yes, we're not talking based. about that. We're talking about the lore. Uh. So, Bad and Ant kind of notice the obsidian around the egg is corrupting more and more, and they also note that any red block that is not part of the egg but is in contact with it is starting to turn white. So there was this big red smiley face up on the wall in the room they're in that Bad built, uh, and it was made of red wool, and the wool was starting to like get bleached white when it was touching the tendril of the egg. Oh. Uh, yeah, so Techno uh, rolls up to Lemanberg one day to break Phil out of house arrest, which was also on Tubbo's birthday. <laughs> um, as Tubbo's birthday present, he um, got murdered by Technoblade. What an honor. Uh, and Rambo follows after them to give them gifts because Rambo just kind of likes these two. And this is the early days of like the anar anarchist type thing. And Rambo, despite his memory troubles, kind of writes things around a lot especially his interactions with people so that he knows who he can and can't trust. And Phil and Techno are at least nice to his face. So he writes them down as nice to his face and that he likes them and wants to help them when he can. Uh, Bat and Puns, meanwhile, are spotting more and more red vines around and they decide to leave them up to at least observe their growth rate. Um, however, they also note that dumping holy water from the Church of Prime seems to negate the growth or at least slows the egg's growth. So that's cool and also worth thinking about. Uh, Techno Blade and Tommy roll up to Lamanberg one day to commit some minor terrorism, and they end up taking Connor Eats Pants hostage and only release him upon getting some of Techno's gear back. The Connor situation is the first time that Tubbo learns that Tommy is alive and he's super happy to see him. But Tommy is extremely bitter that, one, Tubbo never visited him during exile to intervene in the mental torture he was experiencing, and two, that he had attempted to execute Technoblade. Techno has been very, very nice to Tommy as of late, and it's like, what the fuck are you doing? This is a nice dude. On their way out, after getting some of Techno's gear back, Dream tries to confront them and 
take Tommy back with him, but Techno intervenes. He does state that he's willing to give Tommy up if Dream wants to cash in the favor he's owed because of the totem situation, but Dream decides that now is not the time and Tommy can go on his way. Um, Rambo also realizes that someone has moved his memory book. You know how I just mentioned that Rambo writes a lot of shit down? Uh, while he was yeah. prepping... While he was prepping for the festival after the whole, hey, Tommy's alive, that's weird, debacle, um, he realizes he doesn't have the book in his inventory, and he just spends the rest of his stream searching for it frantically, and eventually he finds it in his own house. Despite his memory trouble, he's absolutely certain he did not leave it there. Um... Tommy and Techno come back to do some minor terrorism on Lemanberg again, and this stream is important aside from just, you know, the haha funny terrorizing our friends type thing. Uh, Tommy mentions that he briefly considered blowing up the community house, but decides against it. Um, and then one more time on their way home, Tom, uh, Tom, Techno uh, says to him, like, hey, we should totally destroy Lemanberg together. But, like, with or without you, man, that place is going down. And Tommy's like, dude, I just want my fucking discs back. <laughs> They're still doing this. It's like, please, guys. When will they ever learn? <laughs> when will they learn? So Rambo, around this time period, also constructs his panic room. The panic room is an obsidian box that's not too far away from where the ravine of Pogtopia was. And it was initially intended to be a place that Rambo could go to to calm down. He's got like a bunch of signs on the walls that say, like, you are fine. Don't choose sides, choose people, and dream is the reason. It's a complete distillation of all of Rambu's ideals up to this point. He needs to relax, he doesn't like factions and wants people to choose people, and every bad thing that has ever happened is the result of dream's compulsive need for control over others. Um, wait, am I mistaken, or at this point, Rambu doesn't know who dream, or like hasn't met dream in person yet, right? Rambo has met Dream in passing maybe once or twice. They've never actually had a direct interaction that we know yeah. of together. That okay, we yeah. know about. Yeah. Because yes. I remember that that's mentioned later, but I was mm. like, oh yeah, I wonder why you wrote that Dream sign. Mm. Okay, that oh, he, know he knows like from other people that Dream's kind of an asshole. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> but like, we've never... S at that point, we had never seen him and Dream really interact as Rambu when he is conscious. Uh, so the day of the Green Festival arrives. If there is ever a colorful festival name on this server, don't go to it. The events begin and the right. attendants arrive to play mini games, but Dream is nowhere to be found. Tommy and Techno are spying on the event from a distance, and, you know, Rambu, who is friends with both of these people, comes on over to fill them in on why this event is happening. Before they start spying, though, Techno actually gives Tommy his, you know, favorite weapon, the Axe of Peace, is like a sign of goodwill. Dream suddenly appears and starts wordlessly rebuilding those obsidian walls around Lamanberg, and when people finally calm him down enough to get an explanation out of them, he leads them to the destroyed community house. By the looks of it, the place was detonated by TNT, and he is absolutely insistent that Tommy in it is the one who destroyed it. He is putting up the walls, and he's putting the walls back up as retaliation for this. Now, I don't know how much y'all know about Tommy in it, but TNT is not Tommy in its MO. Tommy Actually, I just want to point out, um, <laughs> when, when Dream was starting to put up the walls, like, everyone was just kind of doing something, and then you could just see Dream in the distance just placing obsidian just fucking nonchalantly. <laughs> it's actually as really funny. Does, <laughs> they're like, but what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they look up and they're like, the fuck is this? Anyway, Why are you here? <laughs> you're supposed to be partying, bruh. Anyway, so the cabinet of Lemanberg rightfully says that since he was exiled, Tommy's not their fucking problem. He's dreams. But Dream then counters that as long as Tubbo maintains possession of Tommy's disc, he is partly responsible for Tommy because that disc is a huge part of Tommy's motivation. If he wants to be completely disowned from having Tommy as a responsibility, he needs to hand that fucking disc over. Um, so Tommy then reveals mm. himself, because him and Techno have, you know, dropped invis pots because they spy in. 
Uh, and he tries to refute the accusations being leveled against him. And, you know, Technoblade's actively trying to protect Tommy. Like, he's willing to fight a 1v3 to get him, or 30 to get him out of here, which is very nice of him. Um, uh, yeah, uh, they're actually surrounded right now, Chloe. They're, they are surrounded by pretty like, much everyone who has shown up. Impossible this- fight, even yeah, for Techno. Like, yeah, even for, well, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Well, yeah, no, now, like, right now, in this moment. Yeah, you know, in this wink. moment, like, this is going to be rough. <laughs> He's um, not prepared for a 1v30, let's just say that. Not, absolutely not. <laughs> so, you know, Tommy's trying to clear his name, but as he's doing this, Tubbo pulls out his ender chest, and he's about to hand Melahai over to Dream. And Tommy is panicking that his most prized possession is about to be surrendered by his best friend to his worst enemy, and he starts scrapping with Tubbo. Like, the boys are fighting. Um, and the fight culminates with Tommy telling T- telling Tubbo, well, I'll try saying that ten times fast, um, telling him point blank that the discs meant more to him than Tubbo did. And, like, everyone just stopped talking with that line, because, like, hey, yowza, that's a good one. Then Tommy, like, takes a deep breath, and he immediately tells Tubbo to just give Dream the damn disc. He absolutely despises the idea of saying something that awful to his best friend, and he has realized he has gone too far. He then leaves Techno's side to join up with Tubbo to fight against Dream, but, you know, that's technically betraying Technoblade, right? We'll talk about it later, but Dream and Techno (laughs) then decide to team up to destroy Lemanberg once and for all at 3 p.m. on January 6th. And I'm going to stress this time, Vlad. It's supposed to be 3 p.m., you rascal. But whatevsies. Um, with one last gut punch before he departs, Dream exposes Ranbu as a traitor to Lamanberg by giving him, by giving Cu- uh, Tubbo a copy of his memory book. Ranbu looks at the one he's holding and realizes it's a fake. It's completely empty except for a single, like, colon, close, parenthesis, smiley face on the first page. Once more, Dream and Techno say, yeah, like, I, I watched very that quickly. That was kind of a mind What's fog. up? May- May I ask a question really quickly? Was January 6th the day of the fucking Capitol riots? Yeah! <laughs> yeah, it was. A, a lot of shit happened that- Oh, that's ter- Oh, that's a foreshadow as fuck! <laughs> Stop, please. My god. <laughs> not only did, not only did Technoflate like, a... destroy LeManberg, but he also destroyed Carson's career and the Capitol riots. No, Some, someone tell Jones. Matt Pat, LeManberg actually Washington, D.C.? My god. Anyway, so uh, let's keep our, po- our like, real-world politics out of my haha funny Minecraft no, yeah, lecture, please. Interesting timing. Yeah. So Dream and Techno make their retreat while Tommy and Tubbo try to rally their troops, but it's pretty clear that not everyone's particularly inclined to come to the aid of Lamanberg. You got people like Sapnap, who doesn't even know if he has it in him to oppose Dream, who's, you know, supposed to be his best friend. We have Nikki, who's unbelievably frustrated that so much strife surrounding Lamanberg is related to Tommy and she had no idea what went on in exile. Thusly, she doesn't think he's ever actually been punished for his actions and she doesn't want to be on his side because he's been nothing but trouble to her. Bun says that he's willing to side against Dream, but you gotta remember that he's Dream's spy, so fuck. Uh, Ranbu is just adamantly against the idea of factions and he's just begging people to value others over material and land. And the only reason he's even humoring this conversation is because he wants people to unite against Dream and recognize that he's the root of all evil. That being said, he has absolutely no intention of fighting fucking Technoblade. He doesn't want to die, come on. Everyone else is at least willing to attempt to put up a fight and the group that remains is adjourning to go gather supplies. Um, as, you know, people are moving around, going to go get their shit together and whatnot. Quackity expresses uh, his desire to execute Ranbu for treason, but Tubbo then freaks the fuck out at him and is like, hey man, remember that time I got executed for treason? That's a little fucked up. Let's not do that, okay? (laughs) Ranbu, meanwhile, is trying desperately to remember how Dream could have possibly gotten a hold of his memory book, and he just can't fucking do it. He cannot recall a time where that would have been possible. He also begins to believe that he's hearing a voice in his head that sounds like Dream, and that voice is telling him that he was the one who blew up the community house, not Tommy. And while Rambo's kind of struggling to figure out what he's going to do, and if getting everyone to side against Dream is even worth it, the stress gets to him, the screen cuts black, and all we hear at the end of the, stream, uh, the screen 
he stream is an Enderman screaming. Because you know, remember Rambo's half Enderman? Ooh, woo. Yeah. Character, right? Ooh. Mental so, breakdown. <laughs> poor boy. Anyway, so hey, it's time for the Doomsday War. Your neutral parties are H Bomb, Fundy, Nikki for a bit, Ranbu and Eric, and the main fight is Techno Dream and Phil's a Minecraft versus Tommy, Tubbo, Sapnap, Puffy, Jack, Allahan, Quackity, and puns in quotation marks. Uh, what I Sapnap- find hilarious about this is it's like, yeah, this is like a three v eight or whatever it is, but it's like about even. <laughs> it's about even because of things yeah. that we'll get to. Let me talk, damn you all. That that top right image is a really really good shot of that. Also, Isn't before it? the before the stuff happened, Chloe, that image up there is a uh, much 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 more green. <laughs> <laughs> it's about one percent more. Green. Uh, anyway, okay. <laughs> so uh, Sapnap did decide to fight on Tommy's side because Tommy spent like an entire afternoon searching the ocean for Mars Sapnap's pet fish that he let go and giving it back to him. Uh, and Sapnap's like, dude, you and I are so fucking square. We're friends now. Um, and despite their numbers, however, Lemanberg's not winning this fight. Firstly, Techno Dream and Phil began their assault an hour earlier than expected, and that catches most of the defending side off guard. Most of the fighters aren't even geared yet, and Bundy had like a brief mental snap where he destroyed the chest where they were holding supplies. Secondly, Phil and Techno spawned multiple withers and started attacking anyone who tried to kill them. Techno also has an army of wolves with him, and the only person who is unremorseful about killing them is Sapnap. In Technoblade's own words, no one kills pets more efficiently than Sapnap. Uh, These two (laughs) actions, however, are merely a distraction to keep the primary fighters away from Dream, who is on an obsidian grid floating over Lamanberg. On the grid, he is glitch-duplicating TNT and is making it rain down on the city. It destroys everything, all the way down to bedrock. The city is reduced to an oversized chunk error that is later dubbed Le Canyon. The final death knell of the country is when Nikki Nietzsche is tired of all the fighting and the lack of punishment for people she believes deserves it, and the loss of the nation she has been fighting for all this time burns down Le Mantry, costing Le Manberg its final life. In the aftermath of the fighting, Tommy and Techno have a conversation about betraying each other, and this is the bit of their, like, dialogue with each other that I think is an actual tragedy of miscommunication, compared to the previous bit where they were just not critically hearing the words coming out of the other person's mouth. I really doubt that Techno's character would have sided with Dream if he had been aware of what Dream had done to Tommy. Techno as a character makes his ideals about freedom of choice very clear. It is one of the most important things to him. He also values justice and equality. He despises the idea of people holding power over others and Dream, in every sense of the word, took power away from Tommy in his liberty by terrorizing terrorizing him every day as a means of maintaining superiority over him. Techno as a character doesn't vibe with that shit, dude. However, Tommy was never able to correctly articulate the torture that he experienced to Techno. Whenever he got close to explaining what had happened to him in exile, his speech got stammery, and he just kept flipping back and forth between saying Dream was evil or Dream was his only friend. Techno knew something was up, but he had never understood the full extent of it because it was not explained to him, and also he lived in the Arctic alone and no one was coming up with the news every day. You get that flash forward in the lead up to Doomsday, and Tommy siding with an institution that Techno despises that attempted to execute him despite all the assistance he had given Tommy, and Dream says, hey dude, I hate this place too. Let's team up. The fuck did we think was gonna happen, right? Meanwhile, while those two are screaming at each other, um, Ghostbird catches up with Phil, and you know, since Ghostbird is the one who built most of New Lemanberg, um, whose father just blew it up, is kind of a yikes move. Uh, this one hurts extra special, because despite Wilbur's ghost generally not remembering the bad things that happened to him in life, he very distinctly remembers Phil killing him. So basically, Ghostbur is repeatedly being hurt by his father, and he doesn't know why. Other things that are happening around this time, Jack Manifold permadies. He died enough in the fighting that he technically lost all three canon lives, 
but upon losing the third one, his game glitched the fuck out, and he wound up in hell, and he was so unbelievably pissed at dying like that, he just came back to life. He is currently living out of pure spite, and I, for one, stan him as a king. That's amazing. Jack, I want Jack- <laughs> I, I want people to I like gotta, I gotta watch Manifold that perspective. Mode. I have no idea that happened. <laughs> Jack Manifold, dude, let's go! Um- Nikki Nichu, meanwhile, noticed that Wilbur had joined the game. You know, her good bestie Wilbur, who came back to help protect her while she was screaming at Schlatt in the aftermath of the Red Festival, but had never canonically interacted with Ghostbur before, so she thought she was fucking hallucinating. Yeah, seeing Ghostbur just breaks something in Nikki. She goes to her bakery, which was kind of one of the only things in Lemanburg that had survived pretty much everything, and she starts laughing hysterically, and then she blows it up. Nikki Niachu is currently unraveling. Ghostbur then later confesses to Tommy that he wants to be resurrected somehow, and Dream might be the only person who has the means to do so, but they also probably need the person who killed Will to pull it off. Eric and Phil both agree to do research on necromancy to see what they could do about this. Jack and Nikki then Rachel, meet up- have you, have you <laughs> changed slides in the no. past, like- No, I'm still uh, okay. on Tuesday. That was- I wanted- <laughs> I that- wanted to make sure- because I, I am covering everything regarding the Doomsday War before we get on to other okay. shit. Um, so Jack and Nikki meet up and agree that they're both kind of pissed at Tommy in it for just existing as a concept, and something needs to be done about him. So they're a duo, a duo now. Uh, Rambo is then taken in by Phil's of Minecraft, who notices he's on the verge of another one of his like blackout breakdowns, and he comforts him before this can happen and brings him back to the Arctic. Uh, Dream then goes into hiding to avoid retaliation for what he has done, because now there's a lot more people than before who are very pissed off at him. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Disunion. Uh, Some important items changed hands during the day's previous events, as well as a couple alignment shifts. Uh, Dream technically has both discs, since he is personally holding on to Melahai and Skeppy is holding on to Cap for him. Sapnap had picked up the Axe of Peace during the fighting. Whatever the fuck is left of Skeppy has formally withdrawn from the Badlands, but he's still living with Bad. Ranboom moves in with the Arctic Anarchists, and most notably, Tubbo begins to build on a glacial bay, Snowchester. So, uh, yeah, Tommy and Tubbo are like, well, that sucked. We should start getting ready to fight the dude who's ruining our lives. And they begin to start prepping gear for a fight. The egg is still a thing. Let me tell you, that hasn't changed. And Bad realizes its influence is growing over people, and it's also spreading a lot more than he previously anticipated. Um, The Wilbur resurrection was interesting, to say the least, down to the very parties attempting it. We have Phil's of Minecraft, who is someone who is part of a group opposing all forms of government, and then we have the literal fucking king of the land, trying to work together and putting aside their differences because they both want Wilbur back. Phil wants his son back, and Eric recognizes that Wilbur's skills as a leader could bring some much-needed stability back to the world in the absence of Lemanberg. Um, so they had Ghostbur and Phil do a brief reenactment of the scene of Wilbur's death, and upon doing so, they accidentally make contact with Schlatt's ghost, who's using the ghost voice echo and funny mic at the same time, and he blesses us with the <laughs> line... Big booty goddess. <laughs> um, so the animatic I have on screen right now is by YouTube user Next Me. Can I can I please just attempt to play it to you? And if uh, you can't yeah. hear it, please tell me because this one's so good. Zach? Will? Nope. Wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa! Please watch this one. Okay, wait, wait, this, this, this... wait. I I have a question, yeah. Rachel. What's up? Is Glatbur the thing that was in the Tangerine Adam Man? Yes. Talking yes, about the other what? Day? Glat is a uh, ghost of Schlatt. Like, Ghostbur is ghost of Wilbur. Glat. Glat. <laughs> yeah, Glat will. <laughs> Schlatt will appear as a ghost and randomly yell Glat at people. <laughs> so, um, please watch this animatic in your Schlatt's own time. Schlatt's character is such a fucking beam. <laughs> it's genuinely funny. Um, Eric also notices that each time they try and fail to, um, you know, resurrect Will, whenever Ghostbird returns to them, it looks like he has the silhouette of ram's horns forming on him. 
Um, and the ghost <laughs> also says that he is craving cigarettes, whiskey, and protein powder, to which the voice of Schlatt echoes, Did someone say protein powder? The group eventually realizes that because they don't really know what they're doing and also they don't have a totem of undying, that this is going horribly wrong and they should probably put this little experiment on hold until they have a more practical and accurate method of working. Meanwhile, with people who aren't trying to, you know, do necromancy, Tubbo recruits Jack to Snowchester and Jack, knowing that being closer to Tubbo will open up opportunities to kill Tommy and Dream, reports this information to Nikki. The two of them are even willing to put killing Tommy on the back burner just so that they can kill Dream first. Good for them, you know? Happens to the best of us. So uh, Rambo heads back to his panic room to go get his pets that he hid there during Doomsday, where he hears that voice again. And the voice then tells him to look behind one of the blocks in the wall, where he finds a chest holding some TNT. And then the voice reaffirms that he was the one who blew up the community house. The voice also tells him that Rambu willingly gave Dream the memory book that was used to reveal him as a traitor. This is upsetting information, but it's okay because the next day um, Rambu gives Technoblade a new netherite axe since the axe of peace is no longer in his possession. And Technoblade like handles it like a true Cinderay by going, this is pretty okay, I guess. It's not like I like it or anything. I love Technoblade. <laughs> I love Yeah, it's so good. Um, Technoblade's the best. Technoblade's so good, dude. Uh, Puppy thinks about her allegiances one day, and she blows up Dream's house and also renounces him as her little duckling. Uh, that name arose because in the earlier days when Puppy had joined the server, Dream would just randomly follow her around like a duckling, and also Puffy just kind of adopts anything in a, like a ten-block radius of her. Um, she also states that she doesn't feel particularly worthy to be a knight anymore, and she also expresses pity for the kids, like Tommy, for being blamed for shit he didn't do, and Tubbo for having to take on all of these weird responsibilities as a leader that she should, he should not have, because, you know, they're children, right? <laughs> While Puffy's yeah. soliloquying, uh, Bab proposes to the rest of the Badlands, and also Pons and Puffy when she is available, to discuss using the egg as a method of creating chaos to disempower the other rising factions. Puffy thinks that Bad has absolutely fucking lost it because time and time again we have seen that that thing is sketches all hell, but she's playing along to keep an eye on the situation. After that meeting that they have adjourns, it's revealed by Bad that he has been completely corrupted by the egg. Bad has a bunch of red in his design, but when we finally see him, all of it has been bleached to that weird grayish white. Oh, that's why his skin changed. Okay. Yeah, that makes the sense. egg fucking ate it. Um, Ranbu, once yeah. again, attempts to confront the voice, and it doesn't go well, as you can imagine. Um, and it is also during this confrontation that he realizes when he blacks out, he does very bad things, and he's with bad people he shouldn't be with. Um, for example, he looks around his new home in the Arctic, and he finds out he has Tommy's copy of Cat in a chest, and this stresses him out so hard he completely blacks out. Uh, it is also on this day that Foolish logs onto the server for the first time and is given gear by Dream, but Dream, you know, runs away pretty quickly because he is not supposed to be there. Well. Um, so what else, what else, what else? Uh, Tommy logs on one afternoon and finds that his house is now a smoldering crater that is on fire. Uh, and there's a note and a chest left in the rubble that says, come see me on Wednesday, be in Tubbo alone. If anyone else shows up, the discs are gone forever. And then within the chest was a lodestone compass that pointed off, I think, east or some shit. I don't know my cardinal directions in Minecraft anymore. But it was simply called Your Discs. Tommy and Tubbo prep for war on Wednesday. And uh, based on his inventory in his stream that we see later that day, it's inferred that um, Rambo was the one who destroyed Tommy's house while he was blacked out. Uh, Tubbo and Jack Manifold, uh, just a few days before the confrontation, begin Project Dreamcatcher. This is the nuclear armaments that they hide in the basement of their cozy little snow village. Uh, Jack, of course, goes to tell Nikki about this, and the, uh, the two plot to use this to kill Tommy if Dream doesn't fucking manage it himself. Um, 
Phil and Techno also go on to found the syndicate. It's supposed to say the, I thought I caught all the typos, but I didn't. Oh, well. Uh, in the stronghold. You remember I talked about the, you know, God descending from the heavens to break the portal on slide 14? Do you remember how long ago that was? Yeah. That's yeah. 31 slides ago. It's like 30-something slides ago. Holy shit. Jesus. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Hannah Rose joins the server. She only started doing lore very recently, so I don't have a lot to say about her. I am sorry. Uh, it is during this time period that Foolish also begins construction of the Temple of Undying, but he is also invited to join Snowchester. You remember on, like, the second slide, that, like, giant fucking pyramid in the desert? Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. the Temple of Undying, and it is absolutely fucking huge. Go, go watch, like, a, a video about Foolish's temple. It's, it's fucking crazy. And he did it all in survival mode, and I'm freaking out, dude. Um, that also begins a very, very aggressive propaganda campaign, urging people to join the Empire. Um, and he really, really hates Foolish because uh, Foolish is incredibly, like, like he looks at the egg and he goes, that thing's evil, get it away from me. Because, you know, Foolish is some kind of divine being. Um, and then, you know, Bad chases Foolish around under threat of violence, and um, Foolish just decides to hang out in the Holy Land so no one can kill him, and he just starts hurling insults at them, and that is why we stand Foolish Gamers. Uh, Tommy and Tubbo okay, are in the final the stages stream. of that preparation for war. Sorry, what was that? Now I have to watch a Foolish stream, that sounds hilarious. <laughs> yeah, foolish is great, dude. I'm not going to talk about how much of an absolute fucking himbo he is, but, like, just trust me on this one. He is kind, strong, and very stupid. Oh, no, yeah, that sounds great. We love foolish gamers in this house. Um, so some of the gear that Tommy and Tabu are collecting in their final stages of preparation are the Axe of Peace, a metric fuck ton of potions, Ghost Burst Pickaxe, and Chekhov's Gun, which was Wilbur's crossbow. Uh... A, an invitation to join the syndicate is formally extended to Nikki Miachu, but she's just really not in a good place right now, and she needs to think about this a bit more. But the offer's on the table. Um, Funz also logs on one day, and he finds a treasure trove from Tommy requesting his assistance. And I mean a treasure trove. I'm talking, like, a couple, like, blocks of netherite and a lot of diamonds. And Tommy just paid puns more than Dream ever did. And since Puns works for the highest bidder, now he's signing, uh, siding with Tommy in it. No more spy business. Ain't that wacky? Uh, so literally Damn. the day after this, and I mean the day after that, um, the boys go to fight Dream. Unfortunately, Dream a freak doe. Uh, and he is on the cusp of killing Tubbo, who is on his last canon life. Dream then this is also Tommy. a really good stream, by this the way. This is a really good stream. I recommend watching this one, too. Yeah. Uh, Tommy and Tubba both have a perspective on it, no one else. Uh, Dream issues yeah. to Tommy an ultimatum, basically. Surrender and go to the prison, or Tubbo dies forever, and then once he backs the boys into a further corner in a bunker in the mountainside, he says he's going to kill Tubbo anyway. Um, so, yeah. Dream can't kill Tommy. He's far too useful in manufacturing conflict, and that's a mean to Dream's end, but Tubbo is extremely disposable as far as he's concerned. Um, as I recommend on the slide, yeah, this is just kind of a stream you have to watch. So the boys are trapped in a bunker, um, and in this bunker, Dream has been holding a lot of different people's prized possessions with slots for more once he gets his hands on them. He wants to keep, uh, he wants to use them to serve as leverage over other people. And to like showcase the severity of this, he has a trap to hold Skeppy to use as leverage over Bad. He's not pulling any punches. He's willing to kidnap people for this. Um, another thing in the bunker, however, is this portal that we initially presume leads to Pandora's vault. Uh, and, you know, once the boys surrender. And just when things seem at their absolute worst, Puns appears through the portal and says, I'm sorry, Dream, but you should have paid me more. And with that, more than half the <laughs> server appears behind him, and they are here to protect the kids. The saviors kind of, you know, realize what Dream was planning as soon as they see a bunch of their stolen shit around the room, and they corner him, allowing Tommy to kill Dream twice, leaving him with one last life. Tommy's about to kill him for good, 
when Dream, who is begging for mercy, reveals that he can revive people. The book that Schlatt gave him to make him side with Manberg back in the day was the Book of Necromancy. And if they kill Dream, they're never going to be able to bring anyone back, including Wilbur. Sam steps forward with a solution. He can take Dream and imprison him and inside of Pandora's vault where he can't hurt anyone ever again. Or so we think. Everyone journeys back to the SMP, and Tommy and Tubbo sit down to watch the sunset, just like they always do at the end of all major conflicts when they hear a voice. It's Wilbur. Not Ghostbur, just Wilbur. And he's absolutely pissed that the boys let Dream live and tells them that they shouldn't be trying to bring him back because he's a terrible person. But at the end of the day, he's still proud of him, of them, and he's very glad that they're okay. I know you can't hear the audio, but just like take my word for it on this one, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's um, fine. I cannot I mean, express to you enough it's about time, anyway. how fucking ballistic it's about the time. fandom went for this shit. Because the main antagonist got I'm put sorry, away, man. and now this Goodbye, new Tom interesting Tom moral <laughs> dilemma has popped up. I'm and sorry, fuck man. that, dude. Puns got to be more, more important again. Let's go. Oh, no. Um, I know I didn't participate. This internet white boy here. Um, but Pons is a super chill streamer, and I like his fucking vibes, and he doesn't baby rage, and he's really, really great to watch when you're doing homework. Uh, and I want to highlight the struggle of being a Puns fan, as, like, having this dude be one of your favorite characters, by an analogy that I just, I have to use. You know how in early Sailor Moon, Sailor Pluto is wicked fucking plot important, but she shows up twice? Yeah. That's Puns. Punz is the Sailor oh. Pluto of this series. He shows up, like, twice, but when he does, it impacts the story in absolutely wild ways. I may get two crumbs of lore a year for his character, but man, are those lore crumbs fucking sick, dude. Punz is like a tasting menu of lore. Pretty much. <laughs> you eat a lot of very, you get a lot of very little tidbits of lore, but they're made by professional chefs and they're meant to last you like three years. Pretty much, dude. Yeah. So, folks, welcome to imprisonment and lockdown. With the big bad out of commission locked up and mostly out of everyone's hair, what the fuck do we do now? Well, Little Shop of Horrors has yet to meet its resolution, if you catch my drift. In addition to the shift of power, now that the dude who's been breathing down everyone's neck is in prison, right? So with Dream gone, the egg pyre begins to rise. Uh, you know, with Dream out of the way, Ranbu begins to think he's free of the voice in his head. This is a short-lived endeavor. By the way, Charlie Slimeskill joins the server um, shortly after Ranbu's like, yeah, I can live my life again. Uh, but Charlie's not super lore involved. Just know that he's here now. Yay! Charlie based. Uh, Charlie Slimes is so fucking cool. He's a very funny guy. Um, so uh, a big allegiance shift is, you know, now that Puns isn't working for Dream anymore, he's got to stay plot relevant, please. So he joined the Egg Pyre, though Sam is uh, now the last standing member of the Badlands who is currently in defense. Uh, Puffy also begins to uh, construct a therapy office. And, you know, Rambo once said, when something goes wrong, you don't need a villain arc, you need therapy. And though she was not around to hear it, Puffy also was thinking the exact same thing, I think. Uh, Snowchester, you know, with Dream gone, declares formal independence from the Dream SMP and continues its nuclear program. Ranbu also develops the silk touch hands because remember, he's part Enderman. Um, he has to do it with his bare hands, though, no use of a pickaxe. Um, and for the most part, he just picks up grass blocks and then puts them down elsewhere, like an Enderman does, because he says he finds it calming. But every once in a while, he'll do something completely busted, like producing infinite cake or endlessly duplicating beds or even picking up spawners, which you're not supposed to be able to do. Tommy also, also in his own words, Ranbu is, quote, 96% sure he can't teleport. Yeah, don't worry, bud. We will get to Ranbu, uh, Tubbo, uh, not fucking, Techno and Ranbu's excellent adventure. Don't you worry. Um, so Tommy goes to visit Dream in prison 
for the first time. And this is actually a really, really good stream to see because this is the first time that we as the audience get to see the full inner mechanisms you have to pass through to get through the prison. Previously, Sam would do like small updates like, hey guys, I finished building this really sick door, but he would never give us too much more of a look into how the place worked. So like, even if you don't care about lore, if you just want to see this place, like that's a good stream to watch. The place is extremely imposing and Sam as the warden versus how he normally is, is also quite jarring because Sam's really, really nice and friendly and he gives people gear when they die and he says, don't worry about paying me back, it's fine. Whereas in the prison, he's monotone, incredibly curt and like he will not laugh at any jokes. He's It's very, very unnerving to say the least. Um, and like that really, really helps with the whole lead up as with him just quietly leading Tommy to the room that is holding the man responsible for all his problems. It's good tension building for a fucking live stream. Um, so pictured is the exterior of the prison and then also the maximum security cell. It is in a room that sits in the middle of a very deep pool of lava and when not traveling to the cell to go speak with the prisoner, lava falls from the ceiling, which cuts off the cell entirely. Uh, to get that far into the prison in the first place, you need to set your spawn and die three or four times just to ensure you haven't brought any items in. Uh, and to prevent people from digging out of the prison, the walls are backed with multiple layers of obsidian and an elder guardian is trapped under the prison, which is perpetually giving anyone nearby mining fatigue. The prison also has a very important rule. If there is a security breach during your visit, the waiver you sign on your way in stipulates that you must be sheltered in place wherever you are, trapped in the prison until the issue is resolved. That's spooky. Another fun thing that happens, though, is Sam and Foolish meet each other and they bond over building and their shared hatred of the egg. Also, I just want to say, this isn't, like, relevant to the plot, but it's endlessly hilarious to me. So that prison was built, and it took the fandom all of, I think, a day to find about six different ways you could hypothetically get out. Don't worry about it. And I think it's funny, because none of them were used, but, like... <laughs> Don't worry about it yet. <laughs> Maybe we can worry about it later. So, uh, Tommy... You know, after dealing with Dream's shit one more time for some fucking reason, decides he wants a fresh start and he would like to build a hotel. He talks to Sam about this, who Sam uh, then introduces him to uh, a character named Sam Nook. Sam Nook is considered a separate entity from Sam. Uh, he is basically an NPC type character who gives Tommy item requests in exchange for building up the hotel for him. Uh, he speaks in that like Animal Crossing type speech, uh, and his dialogue appears, like, in the in-game chat rather than being spoken. It's a, it's just a really cute bit. Um, Sam Nook is also continuously looking out for Tommy and Tubbo protecting their property, and from the people who would do him harm, and for that reason, this NPC is one of the few responsible adults on this server. So, uh, hey, by the way, this is the day that Charlie Slimesicle joins the server and then joins Snowchester because Snowchester was the only group of people who was not threatening him actively. Uh, Fundy and Puffy get together to share some theories on the egg. Who is it? What the fuck is this shit? Uh, one of the theories that keeps popping up from Fundy and Tubbo but has yet to be confirmed is that the egg is somehow linked to the Dreamins. Remember that thing from months ago that I don't even really know what's going on with? Yeah, that. Um, given that, you know, the egg appeared and was originally supposed to be their base, right? So uh, Tommy and Tubbo then run into Bad and Ant, who attempt to show them the egg. Ant's eyes, which were once blue, because, you know, he's like a Siamese cat or something, and Bad, who is still uh, drained of color, you know, Ant's eyes magenta, Bad's, you know, pure white, um, get drags the fucking kids down to the egg room, and Tubbo then relays that the egg says some horrifying things to him and it makes him cry they then show the uh, egg to tommy who is completely neutral to it he is neither drawn nor afraid he just doesn't give a shit 
Uh, they then attempt to forcibly convert them to the egg side, but they run to the safety and protection of Sam Nook. The kids are safe for now, but the egg pyre realizes it's probably in their best interest to kill Tom. If they can't make him love the egg and they can't make him fear it, then he's useless at best and an active threat to them at worst. Also, some fucking good fucking stream, dude, where Techno and Ranbu fuck around and test the extent of the silk cut cans and, like, collect more totems and shit. Um, the clip I have here is from Tall Man Let's Go on YouTube, which shows all the weird moments from the stream where they're weirdly speaking to each other in perfect synchronization. Um... I think this is extra hilarious and ironic because before Ranbu got really, really popular, he was often described as Walmart Technoblade. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, hey, Chloe, I feel like this is a question best directed at you. Do you know the song Supper Time from hit Broadway musical Little Shop of Horrors? No, <laughs> Rachel, no. <laughs> so that song pretty much describes Bad's solution to anyone who he realizes is somehow against the egg and the egg pyre. His first targets are Sam and Puffy. Sam is locked in the chamber with the egg for around 14 hours, and when Puffy and Tommy team up to go get him, they find that the egg has dissolved and consumed his netherite armor and has also forced him to eat his own flesh. They bring Sam home. What the fuck? Yeah, dude, it's fucked up. They do manage to bring him home and he does eventually recover for the most part, but for the next few days, our mans is absolutely off the fucking glue. Uh, another thing Jeez. that the egg pyre is uh, they hire Punk to go hire Purple to kill Puffy in retaliation for freeing Sam. They also, you know, try to imprison Punk with the egg, but he just kind of bails, which is good for him, honestly. I love, we love it when Punk stays winning, you know? Did you have a question there, bud? I do not. Kane? No, I'm good, sorry. Okay, okay. So, um, Nikki and Jack are still trying to kill Tommy, especially now that Dream is away, and so, you know, with only one of their targets still standing, they're like, hey, what if we use the nuclear detonation test that Tubbo and Jack are supposed to do with Project Dreamcatcher, and we try to get Tommy caught in the blast? So, basically the plan is, if Nikki can get Tommy to the test site just before the bomb goes off, He'll be vaporized. And it's okay if Mickey's caught in the blast, too. She still has all of her canon lives right now. Um, their plan eventually fails, despite their best efforts, because as Nikki is trying to lure him to the blast site, because they're collecting materials for Sam Nook, um, Tommy just stops dead in his tracks and starts talking about Avengers Endgame for, like, a full two minutes. Like he, re he refuses to move. He's just talking about Endgame. They miss the blast by 30 seconds. Um, the thing about the blast, though, uh, is, you know, it still happens. And it looks very, very similar to the damage dealt to the canyon. Like, to give you an idea of, like, what the fuck Tubbo is playing with right now, right? Mm-hmm. In, yeah. like, in Minecraft, is it a ton of TNT? Um, we've never, like, seen the detonation in person, so I can't really answer that. All we know is, like, we saw this, like, flat piece of land at one point before, and then the next time they go to it, it looks like Le Canyon, but it's not Le Canyon. <laughs> A few other things that happen is Bad attempts to recruit Quackity to the Egg Pyre because, you know, he's a man of politics. He can be reasoned with. But Carl, a time traveler who has seen some shit involving the egg at this point, throws some items at Bad as part of a warning to stay the hell away from one of his fiancés. Um, while they're having a heart-to-heart, -heart, Bad also explains his motives for Quackity, and it basically boils down to he wants Steppy back, right? And the egg claims that they can be reunited if everyone joins the egg. 
by the way, at this point in time, um, you know, prior to this moment, the only people who ever heard the egg speak was Bad and Ant. Uh, but it was just kind of like we had to take their word that there was some fucking, you know, voices in their head or something. Um, but now when people go near the egg, sometimes audio that the audience can hear is played. Also, uh, Puns is definitely um, corrupted by now. His sick fucking threads get drained of all color and his eyes turn red, which is an L for me. That's my boy. What's up? Chloe? I do not think anything was said. Oh, okay. I heard sound, but okay. Um, yeah, the egg says, like, the audio cues are, like, um, like, reversed and heavily distorted speech, but there's, like, a bunch of Twitter accounts at this point that are completely dedicated to deciphering it. One of my favorite <laughs> egg exchanges are, uh, is the one that it has with Technoblade later down the line. Like, that's a good one. Um, so Phil kind of notices that every once in a while, uh, Rambo will speak in the game chat in a completely different language that no one can understand. Like, there have been instances where people have, like, copy-pasted the, um, the Enchant Table script into the game, but as far as we are aware, this is a completely separate dialogue and, like, dialect that you know, the fan just kind of refers to as, like, Ender speech. Because, like, yeah, okay, fuck it, whatever, sure, he's Enderman. Um, during some of their, uh, you know, shenanigans around the server, Ranbu and Phil go to rescue Fundy from Ant Frost attempting to kidnap a- another uh, Egg Pyre recruit. Uh, other fun things that happen uh, are Tommy in it hiring Jack to work at his new to- hotel once it opens, and, you know, Sam Nook, our man who protects the youth is like, I hate Jack Manifold, Tommy in it. I do not trust him, to which Tommy just kind of ignores it. Yeah, Tommy. Uh, Puffy also begins uh, reconstruction of the community house because it was still just kind of a floating crater. I think the only thing anyone had really uh, done about it is Eric took some sponges to clean up the water, and they also kind of rebuilt a dirt path going through the previous intersection so people could still get by. Um, Bad also goes to visit Dream in the prison, and despite all of Bad's, you know, uh, possessedness, he's kind of troubled by the genuine inhumane conditions that Dream's being kept under, such as no windows. Uh, Dream keeps throwing out his clock, so he has absolutely no semblance of time left. There's nothing for him to really do other than write in a couple books, and the only thing he has eaten is raw potatoes. Um, on the... On Reverse Randall's- Irish famine. Sorry. <laughs> Reverse <laughs> Irish, fam- uh, Irish potato famine. Um, on January 30th, Ranboo goes to visit Dream in prison. And this is a stream you need to watch. This I watched the stream. It's really fucking good. It's really, really fucking good. Ranboo goes to try to, you know, confront Dream and be like, I don't even know you. You're an asshole. You're just, I keep hearing your fucking voice in my head, but fuck you, I'm free now, except Rambo doesn't say fuck you, because he doesn't say it's family friendly, don't worry. Um, but it ends with some reality is not quite what it seems shenanigans, and you really need to watch this one on your own, January 30th, Rambo Vods, please, please, please do yourself a favor. Um, Punk also finally manages to get in touch with Purpled and makes good on contracting him to go kill Captain Puffy. Uh, During the same stream, the Eggpire is also kind of looking at the land, and they realize that the vines just don't seem to spread anywhere near the Holy Land. This is kind of like a follow-up on the information of realizing that the Holy Water kind of keeps it at bay, too. Um, The day after his really, really good stream that everyone should fucking watch... Ranbu goes to the prison to see if his visit was or was not a dream or a hallucination. Because there's no record of it in his memory book, but when he asks the warden about it, Sam produces a waiver signed by him in that funky ender script, which, you know, proves to him that he was there at some point, even if he doesn't remember it. Um, In the coming days, Captain Puffy also attempts to destroy the egg, but when she, you know, breaks a block off of it, she takes actual damage from it and she has to retreat. Uh, Jack also accidentally touches the egg a few days later, and when he does, it took out half of his health bar. Does the box have thorns on it? I don't know. Um, Warden looking ass. 
Yeah, Nikki Neachu's mental health is just deteriorating more and more as the days go by due to an onset of insomnia. As a, she's just not doing well mentally. She's um, one of the things she does is uh, instead of eating, uh, when she runs out of sprint, is she just throws herself off a cliff to reset her hunger bar. <laughs> And it's that like, is interesting. That's so fucking metal. I'm, please care more about Nikki Neachu more. Please, it's so fucking good. Hell yeah. But this is a character who we all, like, idealize. It's like, yes, this is the one morally, like, good person who has her shit together and is doing the right thing. And then we watch her spiral downward, and it's really sad. But right now she's kind of on the up and up, and we're very happy for it. Um... I'm not really sure how important this next one is to the lore. I really don't know with these two ever, but uh, Ponk spends a significant amount of his time trying to woo Sam for Valentine's Day. Um, and while Sam doesn't get the hint in time for Valentine's Day, I guess it kind of worked because the two prompts to go out with each other on a picnic, which is very sweet. We love that for them. Um... So Puffy and Techno begin their correspondence with each other because Captain Puffy's like, I can't fight Bad Boy Halo, Ant Frost, and fucking puns by myself. I need someone who's better at PvP. So she sends him a note asking him for some assistance, but yeah, put a pin in that one. The Kanoko Kingdom is also founded during this time period by the building of its library. You might remember that as the nation run by Carl, Jacobs, George, and Safnap that is fairly significant to the lore of Tales of the SMP. Please watch Tales mm -hmm. of the SMP. <laughs> so good. Um, Safnap also goes to visit Dream, who um, he, uh, Dream asks Safnap basically to tell Ranbu the smiley face, uh, and when Sapnap does pass on this message, it immediately sends Ranbu into his Enderwalk state. Um, another important thing that happens during Dream and Sapnap's conversation is um, he basically says to him, like, Dream, if you escape, I'm going to be the one to kill you for this. Like, you're done. Um, and yo, is that a Minecraft manhunt reference? <laughs> There's, like, this weirdly popular yet oddly compelling like fan headcanon that the events of the dream smp are like a prequel to minecraft manhunt if it had lore it's that's like kind of metal actually <laughs> yeah no isn't it because it's like okay so these guys can come back quite a few times but dream only gets one shot because he only has one life like oh what a creative connection the fandom made that's that's really neat um February 13th is a Technoblade stream you need to watch. Um, Bad attempts to convert Techno over to the Eggpire, and upon his refusal, Bad attempts to kidnap Ranbu. This is a really, really good um, kind of character building stream because it kind of showcases that Ranbu is learning to trust people again, and so is Techno, and that these two characters care enough about each other to, you know, go to Bat and fight someone off for him. Um, there's a couple cool Easter eggs to uh, Tales from the S&P, The Masquerade. Uh, if you kind of decode some of the speech the egg says to Techno, it tells him he looks familiar because Technoblade played the antagonist in the Tales of the S&P Masquerade episode. Uh, that antagonist was working under the influence of the egg, so that's a cool fucking nod. Uh, it is also in this stream yeah. that Techno and Puffy formally ally with each other and begin the pro-omelette faction. <laughs> Once again, February 13th, Technoblade stream. Absolute classic. Uh, Ranbu and Tubbo adopt yeah, a baby Steve. zombie piglin named Michael. It is their son. What's up? Shout out to Steve, Technoblade's polar bear. Technoblade's emotional support polar bear. <laughs> yeah, that's the, the most important character in the SMP. Steve has a lot of fan art now because of that stream. <laughs> Good. She deserves it. <laughs> uh, for reference, Chloe, during that stream, um, Technoblade had a polar bear on a lead and was just dragging him around everywhere. <laughs> Anytime Bad <laughs> really was funny. Like, trying to do... He did the same thing he did to Dream with the donations uh, in the in a previous stream. Where anytime Bad was trying to do lore or was like lagging behind or some shit, <laughs> he was like, Look, dude, I just want my polar bear with me, okay? He's my emotional support polar bear. Oh, wait, did, did you mention the, the dream house thing? 
where <laughs> Technoblade starts making fun no, of Dream for not having a house. Not having a house. I'm not talking about <laughs> homeless Dream. It's not plot relevant <laughs> to me right now. Okay, I'll, I'll tell. I'll let I'll the tell. girl finish her lecture. Yes, Chloe, please, remind me to tell please. you about that later. It's a good bit. I've been told about it before. Guys, okay. we have we have six slides left. We're in the home stretch. We can do it. We can do it. So, um, you know, Rambo and Tubbo adopt a baby zombie piglin named Michael, who lives with them in Snowchester. The big in it hotel is also finished by Tommy and Sam Nook, and it's kind of like a post game thing for Tommy, where if he wants to keep giving Sam Nook shit, he can upgrade the interior. We love Sam Nook in this house. Uh, Puffy also places a bunch of glass over the top of the canyon, so people can actually, you know, walk over it instead of having to circumvent the fucking crater. Foolish also finishes the outside of the Temple of Undying. I am putting it, the front view of it here so you can understand how fucking sick this place looks. Please yeah, that looks cool as shit. It's so fucking cool, dude. Also, uh, Foolish is by far, like, gold-wise, the richest person on the server. I'm pretty sure Techno and Rambu are the richest diamond-wise, but, like, Foolish used a lot of gold in the name of his aesthetic, and you know what? We're here for it. So, um... Tommy goes to visit Dream again because he has decided that it is his hobby to kind of give Dream a taste of his own medicine by mocking him for his isolation, just like Dream did to him in exile. Um, but while Tommy is with Dream, there's a series of TNT explosions heard from somewhere just above the maximum security cell. And as the waiver states, when you enter, anyone who is in the prison at the time of a potential security breach, such as this with TNT going off, is subject to be confined and sheltered in place exactly where they are. In Tommy's case, he is locked in the high security cell with Dream. He's locked in the cell for an indeterminate amount of time with the bastard who tortured him and killed or tried to kill most of the people he loved. Uh Uh-oh. Boop. Boop. I know what happens next. Enter lockdown. Uh, Eric returns to the server and to streaming after a, you know, mental health break. Mental health is very, very important. We all need to take care of it. Welcome back, King. We missed you. Um, Jack learns that Tommy's locked up, and so he tries to take over the hotel, which he then renames to the Big Manifold Hotel. Uh, and that upsets <coughs> Sam, Nook, and Puffy. So Puffy throws up the little sign that you see on the right side that says Big In It Hotel, just so we all know what's up. Um, Puffy, Puffy spent, um, like a few different streams just doing, uh, MS paint art and then putting it up around the server, and this was one of them. I think it looks nice. <laughs> it's cute. It's great. It's great. Um, so, Bad and Ant are hired as guards at the prison by Sam to assist with the breach, but I still can't quite figure out why Ward and Sam would hire the two possessed people who locked him in the room with the egg. I, you know, I, it, it's Minecraft roleplay. I'm not going to think about it too hard. Um, we learned from some coded messages throughout his streams um, that Rambo is definitely still somehow under someone, presumably Dream's mental sway. People keep seeing him sleepwalk around the server. When he opens up his uh, inventory, we see, like, messages based on the first letter of each block that say like he's in control or like help me and shit like uh uh-oh that's not good but it's okay because Tubbo and Ranbu get platonically married platonically only because they're children don't be weird about it um and they are going to raise Michael together they also decide to make the Bean Boo Hotel to have like a friendly competition with Tommy once he gets out of jail um Puffy also builds McPuffies. It's McDonald's, but better, and also Captain Puffy themed, and that's what we like to see. Um, The egg becomes a lot more openly aggressive towards Foolish during this time period. Like, Ant will just show up in game chat, typing in, like, a weird garbled code, uh, code language that translates to the egg threatening Foolish, his son Foolish Jr., and, like, the safety of Foolish's temple and shit. Um... But, you know, while all that fun shit that's happening outside is going on, Tommy in it has been stuck with Dream for days. And every day they're just bickering and arguing with each other. And that kind of culminates into, like, a shouting match over the existence of the Book of Necromancy and the mere concept that Dream will somehow escape Endor's fault. The argument fully comes to a head when Dream beats 
Tommy to death barehanded. This is a plot death, and it costs Tommy in it his last canon life. Uh oh, sisters. Tommy's gone, crab rave. <laughs> Tommy in it is dead, crab rave. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, welcome to present day things. The problem with, like, writing things down for events that have, like, just happened is I don't know what's going to be super fucking important to the plot in the long haul. So I'm just kind of covering from here on out things that I think are significant. Um, but I'd recommend kind of reading the more recent wiki page for this one and the era in case I miss something really, really important. So, yeah, like, technoply streamed, like, yesterday, and also, yeah. like, Phil's has been streaming a lot, too, oh so I know those I, are the two I'm yeah. following as far as on I Twitch, know, I know they have been. Techno's stream was not a lore one, however, after I hopped off call with you guys yesterday, Eric went live and had a, a lore stream, and so I, like, rushed to put something about that on the final oh my God. I was so, <laughs> dude, I was so stressed, I was like, Eric, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> you don't you don't have to continue to update this thing to kill yourself over it, please. No, no. I I, I distilled everything as best I can to one <laughs> additional bullet point. So anyway, okay, good. The more the era of mourning is present day. There are no new players on the server. A melancholy settles over the world as people realize what the death of a young man as involved in their lives as Tommy it was means for them. Unless you've been gunning to kill him for the past few months. In that case, Crab Rave! So, Crab Rave. Were, I'm were, joking. Sorry, what's up? I, I also said Crab Rave, and then crab I said I'm rave. joking. <laughs> Tommy and it's dead Crab Rave! I'm a, I'm a techno head. <laughs> you are a techno head, you silly goose. Um, so, a lot of people were online when Tommy died, and they all saw that fucking death notification pop up in chat. Tabu, Tabu, Rambu, and Jack immediately rush to the prison as soon as it happens, where they confront Sam, the warden, who has very, very few answers for them. Tabu completely denies, like, the reality of what's going on, and Sam states to them that he believes this is his greatest failures, allowing Tommy to die. Um, he recounts to them that once Tommy you know, dropped, he heard Dream laughing hysterically. Um, and, you know, that's a line that the fan comics took and fucking ran with, and it was really, really cool. Imagine. And I really, I really Jesus appreciate it. Like, yeah. The fan artists have really, really active and creative imaginations, and I'm glad they're, you know, using their talents for haha funny Blockman roleplay instead of, I don't know, getting taken advantage of by fucking Cheer. <laughs> <laughs> um, in a later conversation with Ranbu that he has, he um, takes Ranbu's memory book for him briefly, and he writes to tell Ranbu to not blame himself for not doing anything to get Tommy out, but instead to blame the warden for his failure to act in Tommy's defense soon enough. Um, the two also go on Aww. to discuss to discuss how the explosion that initially sent the prison into lockdown might have been planned in advance somehow. Uh, Jack Manifold at this time kind of realizes that his angry at Tommy was probably misguided. And now that Tommy's, you know, dead, he really doesn't know what to do with himself because, you know, the hatred had been consuming him for months and now there's really nothing left for him. Um, as a memorial, Ranbu quietly plants some flowers outside of Tommy's house. And that is the image to the right. It's Tommy's little hobbit hole with all the roses in front of it. You can see the big in it hotel in the background. Um, Jack then travels around the server and informs various parties of the news. Foolish is kind of indifferent to what happens, but suggests that, you know, Jack goes to visit the therapy office with Puffy so that he can get some grief counseling. Uh, Quackity initially approached Jack to talk about a business deal because Jack claimed ownership of the hotel and Quackity is running a casino. So like, you know, economics and whatnot. Um, but he immediately just kind of shuts down upon being informed that Tommy's dead. Ant takes the news to the rest of the Egg Pyre, and they have a fucking party. Because with Tommy out of the way, there is no one with a considerable amount of influence who is a particularly immediate threat to them. 
And I say immediate because Technoblade and the Syndicate as an organization stand for the freedom of choice of others and the Eggpire's whole thing being mind control, removing free will. Like, that's not going to fucking fly with the Syndicate. But Tommy... That might be a fantastic arc, honestly. that would be a pretty good arc. And, you know, the Techno Randu stream was, like, kind of implying that, like, Techno hates these people. But Tommy kind of has this way of quickly rallying people to a cause that the syndicate has not necessarily shown itself to have. Again, this is, you know, very, very recent, recent shit. So who's to say, like, something could change in the future. Um, Yeah. And also, I don't think anyone knows about the syndicate other than, like, the four, or technically five people people that are in it. Who are in it. Um, So, yeah. There's also also, that. (laughs) If only there was someone else on the server who was known for their leadership and rallying ability. Hmm... (laughs) Hmm. Anyway, um, am I stupid? Who is it? That's literally why they were trying to bring Wilbur back. <laughs> oh, duh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I, I thought it was someone alive. <laughs> You'd think. I mean, Dream's a possible candidate, I guess, but I don't know. Yeah, I was going to say Dream? Like, everyone hates him. <laughs> anyway, oh. so um, everyone kind of agrees to just not tell Sam Nook because the information would be absolutely devastating to that poor NPC. And he just stands outside of the hotel and is like, boy, the hotel's done. Tommy's sure going to be excited when he gets back. I'm so sad. It's so, he literally, you know that one episode of Futurama where um, we learned about Fry's dog? Yeah, who waited for him every day after he got frozen? Fucking Hachiko 2.0. Hachiko 2.0. Yeah, that's literally, like, what Sam Nook is up to, and it- Oh, it's so fucking sad, dude. Um, Puffy in particular is hit by this news very hard because she had promised to herself that she was going to protect the kids as much as possible, and not being able to intervene means that she failed Tommy. She also passes this news on to King Eric, who's also quite distraught, and she, Foolish, and Eric go build a couple statues for Tommy near his home. Um, Tabo kind of bills him a, a very, very humble memorial in Snowchester. And I would love to include a picture of all these statues and memorial itself. But for whatever reason, the image quality on the wiki for these is absolute garbage. <laughs> so we're going to go with the flowers, I guess. Fair enough. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, the explosion that set off this chain of events is very, very suspect and strange. And not even Sam has an explanation other than someone probably planned it, which, no shit, dude. So, Tubbo begins to conduct an investigation. He flies up to the um, roof of the prison and he finds no exterior damage, but there's this weird break in the snow that has fallen on top of the prison because, you know, it gets to that height in the building, right? Um, And it's kind of, like, in the shape of what you would expect for a TNT blast, implying that something exploded on or just below it. He genuinely believes that anyone could have done this, but mainly suspects the anarchists, given how Techno owes Dream that favor. Um... But he's very, very adamant about saying it can't be Ranbu. I can't, I'm sorry. It can't be Ranbu, right? Um, Tubbo doesn't know about Ranbu's sleepwalking tendencies. Any other theory that Tubbo puts forth after this kind of is devolved into utter nonsense because grief is clouding his thought process. For example, he posited that the multitude of fast food themed bills that have appeared on the server have something to do with this. And then he says, I'm losing my mind. And like, that's it. Um, several days pass and the egg grows stronger. They dare to attempt to threaten a demigod. Foolish is, you know, reluctant to scrap too hard because he knows that these are relatively innocent people who have been corrupted by this funky fucking parasite. Yeah. They, you know, they send Honk at him to drop a, um, like, like, um, like a, a seed for the egg at one of the statues at his temple. And Foolish is like, okay. 
and and so Ponk is like, I don't like that, and he leaves. Um, March 4th is a very, very probably must-watch for current day war lore, uh, because Tommy wakes up in the afterlife, and he speaks to Wilbur, who tells him the world's probably better off without the two of them in it, because they're nothing but trouble. Moments later, as he is attempting to, you know, get answers out of Wilbur for what the hell is going on, he wakes back up in the cell. Tommy and Dream figure out while they're, you know, freaking out, like, oh god, we have defied the laws of nature. Um, Tommy has been dead for approximately two days, but Tommy feels like he's been gone for well over a year. Thusly, time moves somewhat differently in the afterlife. Dream only did all this by bringing Tommy back to prove to himself, uh, to prove to him and to himself that the Book of Necromancy works and it works well. Dream equates himself to a god because now he has control of life and death. Tommy begs Dream not to bring back Wilbur and to destroy the fucking book, but Dream tells him he has it all memorized and that he wants to revive Wilbur as a method to help himself escape. Tommy's still stuck with him for a few more days. Uh, Nikki formally joins the syndicate because she is frustrated that she and Jack were unable to accomplish their aims. Rambu also joins because he realized that he could, you know, use his membership in the organization to dissuade the others from attacking Hubbo and Snowchester. Uh, Snowchester, you will recall, is a commune, not a government, but it does have nukes in the basement, and that's a little bit sketchy. Uh, Ant then decorates the egg chamber for an upcoming event called the Red Banquet. I can't say anything about this because we don't even know when it's happening. But any time on the server that there is a, a title of red and then insert event in the name, it's not going to go well it's not for good. anyone. Uh, Rambo and Tubbo I think that also applies to real life. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like the Red Scare, there was nothing good about that. Yeah. <laughs> then you got like media examples like the Red Wedding. It's like, uh oh, uh oh. So uh, Rambo and Tubbo, Tubbo oh, trying to fire you know, red. <laughs> Pokemon Fire Red. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, no, that's shush, a good one. That's a good one. Fucking fighting words. <laughs> no, no, it's my favorite Pokemon Game Boy game, please. Um. So no, Rambo you, and, and Tubbo, you know, trying to, you know, move on with their lives and, like, begin to heal through grief, commission Foolish to build them a new mansion. And Foolish has been working on this shit for literal weeks now. He is working on it every single day. I, I think he finished it on, like, day 16 of this survival mode. Look up the Snowchester Mansion if you ever get a chance, because it looks really great. Um... Puffy also finds a shipwreck where she finds clothing and a book that clearly belonged to her. And she states, you know, during this discovery, she has absolutely no memory of any event before November 16th, which is the day she came to the server. Um, based on the reading, she was once a captain on some kind of doomed voyage. This was a very, very recent stream. So, like, this is uh, Puffy's uh, beginning to uncover her character's backstory. Pause. Um, a few other very, very notable recent events that occurred. Um, the Red Vines started killing the flowers outside of her house. Uh, thusly, it was hurting Hannah, who I don't remember if you remember me talking about her. I don't know. If she's the weird flower thing. Yeah, she's got the connection with the flowers. And when she goes to try to figure out what the hell is going on, the egg pyre lock her in the egg room and she passes out. Uh, the Egg Pyre also continued to attempt to threaten Foolish by blowing up a statue in the Temple of Undying. And, you know, Foolish, who is a deity of some sort, calls down lightning upon them. In the words of my slide here, it's baller as fuck, dude. Because, <laughs> you know, Foolish is always like, I don't want to hurt anyone. I'm a pretty nice guy. But, you know, at one point I was a death god, so. Based um, Foolish. We base Foolish is so fucking good, dude. He's also just really, really like nice and chill. Like, yeah, it's, it's a good streamer to have on in the background, much like puns. Um, Considering Sam that Lines Foolish is a uh, anthropomorphic totem on dieting, um, did did they ever like talk to Foolish about um the, resurrection the whole resurrection thing? thing? They haven't addressed it, but he has. <laughs> he always, he does this bit where he goes, 
you know, a lot of people have been talking about like resurrecting people from the dead and then he goes F5 mode so he's looking directly at us and he goes gee I wish we could do something about that <laughs> that's <laughs> it's amazing a, it's a good, I love Foolish dude he's funny I gotta watch him with his streams now yeah he's, he's a fun guy uh, him and Eric did a stream last night um, that was mostly just them kind of talking about uh, well you know we'll, we'll get to it we'll get to it um, keep going keep going yeah so uh, Sam logs on and realizes that Hannah's been missing for a few days and he goes looking for her and eventually finds her in the egg room. Now, Hannah um, dresses entirely in like pink and purple and she's got like roses going up her arm. Um, and when Sam finds her, all of the color has been completely like dragged out of her except for her hair. Um, and when Sam tries to get her to leave, like, he has to drag her out of the room by force because the egg is trying to convince her to stay with it. And he brings Hannah home. And, like, that's, like, the most we've heard about what the egg has done to her recently. But, like, it's not good, Chief. Uh, in brighter news, though, Nikki Miachu is doing very, very well. Uh, she's been spending a lot of time building an underground city to give people who need it a hiding place, but also to supply people who are dying a lot. Like, she's got spare sets of diamond armor and a lot of food and a couple enchant tables floating around, and you can just kind of stay when you need to. She also builds herself a new bakery, and she enthusiastically tells her visitors that she is baking again, which was her hobby, and was, like, a thing her character was known for. Um, and as a character, she's starting to move on and is letting go of her anger. And you know what? We Like, we love that. We love that for her. Her. So, uh, hey man, it's March 12th, and we've got another pretty recommended viewing of a Tommy in its stream. Uh, so Dream and the resurrected Tommy uh, have been stuck together for about a week. Uh, and on the day he's supposed to go in and deliver like food and supplies to Dream, Sam discovers that Tommy's in there with him again, and he comes to get him immediately and the entire time he's just trying to tell him he's so sorry he let this happen like holy shit dude i can't believe you're alive but the entire time Som tommy's just screaming at sam that he let him die um tommy also says that sam needs to suspend all visitation because he knows and suspects that someone is attempting to help dream escape running theory right now is um you know, it's Techno's favor, but who's to say? Or probably Ranbu, honestly. We don't know. Um, it's worth noting that we legit don't know how many lives Tommy has now. Like, when he got resurrected, did all three get restored? Does he only have one? If he dies again, is it perma-dead? Or is there no limit on resurrecting a person? What the fuck is, is resurrection going to do to a person psychologically? We don't know yet. All we know is that Tommy is incredibly insistent that absolutely no one else is brought back, especially Wilbur. I, for one, think we should resurrect Mexican Dream, though. But that's just me. Right? Mexican Dream was just a nice man who went to go comfort Nuestro his Nino. friend. Huh? It's Nuestro Nino, our, our son. Our son. <laughs> Mexican Dream was just a nice young man who went to go visit a friend who was suffering, and for what? He got murdered? <laughs> it's because anyway. he was Mexican. Oh my god. No. Close to the end, pals. I really need to use the bathroom. Um, we are on okay, slide 54 Lord. right now. You want me to kick it up a little? Whatever you want to do. I'll go faster, I promise. Okay. So, uh, you can also just little... mute yourself. Yeah, I guess. I don't want to if... mute myself and take a shit on stream. <laughs> I don't live like that. Imagine I mean... if that's what gets you popular, though. Oh, my no. God. That you have money. <laughs> no, it's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> please don't, please don't. My pride isn't worth that much. <laughs> don't you mean my, your pride is worth a lot more than that? It takes a lot less. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, a uh, speed run. That's speed run. too much. Just keep going. Speed run. Uh, so Tommy and Pubbo <laughs> run into each other as Tommy, like, leaves the prison. And initially, they, like, can't believe that the other person is real. Um, and when the second, like, Jack sees Tommy, he's 
pissed because he's like, I spent all these days being sad for nothing. Um, and a lot of people are rightfully confused because, like, how the fuck are you alive there, champ? What? And Tommy is, like, far too jarred by the experience he has gone through to explain anything. And anytime anyone's like, you were dead, what the fuck? He freaks out and is like, please don't say that to me. I don't want to think about it. Like, ah. Uh. Um, Tommy also runs into Crackity, and uh, when Crackity sees him, he, he's initially like, dude, it's so disrespectful of you to like, go around dressed up as a dead person. What the fuck are you doing? And then Tommy's like, fuck you, it's me. Um, and Crackity's like, oh, holy shit. Um, and Tommy manages to explain to him that Dream used the book to bring him back. Um, side note, Quackity's really just kind of been like gone for a while. Um, and that is because he has been uh, building a massive casino city called Las Nevadas. And he plans to use this to achieve economic power over others. Um, Quackity has a big lore stream about that. I we can't talk about that too much yet, though. Um, Jack, you know, uh, once again, pissed at Tommy in it for existing, uh, decides to try to become a prison guard to prevent Dream from reviving Tommy again, should Jack manage to kill him again. Um, Tommy runs by Captain Puffy's therapy office, and she he just leaves a, mo a note that says, Help me! Um, she responds as soon as she logs on, and the ball is currently in Tommy in its court for if he is going to get therapy. Uh, days later, Tommy goes to Tubbo and Ranboo's mansion and tells them that they need to kill that green bastard in the cell as soon as humanly possible, and the group uh, recruit Gosper along the way. Um, Gosper, you know, tells them that they should make Dream revive Mexican Dream before they kill him, and honestly, I could not agree more. Uh, oh, the shit, lads, yes. Yeah, everyone, everyone's on the same page. Why, why can't they do it? Um, the lads intend on surveilling the prison frequently to see if the breach that allowed the TNT incident to occur appears again, and they then intend uh, to use that to get into the prison to kill Dream. Uh, on March 16th, this is an absolute must-watch fucking stream. I, I cannot... Like, this stream was so fucking cinematic. Why is Quackity the haha -ha funny man? having, like, one of the most plot-forwarding streams in a weirdly cinematic way that we have seen to date. I, I need to know. Quackity March 16th, please. Uh, this is the Las Nevadas stream. Uh, Quackity and Bad in the beginning have a heart-to-heart -heart on the egg and their methods of achieving power. Um, the camera cuts and we find Quackity uh, walking into a gym that the ghost of Jay Schlatt runs now, I guess? Another cut, and we see Quackity going into the prison to visit Dream, but he's allowed to bring in a netherite sword and axe with him. He threatens to kill Dream if he doesn't give up the fucking book. And when, you know, Dream refuses to yield it, he promises to come back and torture him every single day until he gets what he wants. And, you know, Quackity's usually, like, a very bombastic character, kind of got, like, the wacky laugh and, like, says non sequiturs a lot, but, like, he really took on a very, very serious persona during this stream, which is interesting and, frankly, quite unnerving. Um, Quackity then burns a bunch of evidence to the existence of L. Rapids, and there is a hard cut to a bunch of poker chips scattering across the table. We got a casino coming to the server. Um, Fundy does a social experiment in the uh, days following this. Basically what he does is he sets up a redstone contraption in the community house that would either blow it up again or it would dispense a single diamond if the button is pushed. And the puppy sees it as she's passing by and she goes, ooh, what's this? And she, she hits the button with an arrow out of just sheer morbid curiosity and it blows the entire thing sky fucking high. <laughs> holy shit <laughs> yeah oopsie doodles um jack is still insistent on being a prisoner guard and he goes to sam's house to ask for a position and he finds the place robbed uh jack goes into full detective mode uh to get in sam's good graces to find the culprit and make sam like him more so he gets a job. um 
Honk, meanwhile, goes to steal some of the prison's access cards that you need to get in and out of certain areas of the prison. And as punishment, uh, Sam kills Honk, and this takes out one of Honk's canon lives. Uh, the next day, as further punishment, Sam kidnaps him, and then apparently he has severed his left arm and was tormenting him until the key cards were returned. I remember a couple slides ago when these two were, like, going on a picnic and shit, and it was really, really sweet? I, I oh, knew yeah. that Sam was, like, a serious character, but holy shit. Yeah, Sam's normally, like, so nice to people, so, like, when he gets like this, it's scary. Um, he takes his job seriously. Takes, <laughs> yeah, Punk tells him that being the warden has changed Sam in some way, and it is absolutely, like, for worse. Oh, absolutely. Um, so, Tubbo, as the days have been passing by, has been growing more and more fearful of the prospect of Dream escaping and he wants to move the nuclear armaments out of Snowchester into a more like secure and secret location. And as he and Jack are transporting them, when they return to the bunker, they find that one of them is missing. So there's just... Uh-oh. Yeah. Um... Uh-oh. <laughs> So uh, Tubbo, Tubbo like tells Jack in a panic as soon as they realize it's gone, like whoever is holding that nuke is gonna get killed when it goes off because, like, you know, it, the the way they have it set up is like if one of them goes off, they all go off. So like, uh oh, um, our last, our last. Uh, bullet point is is the lore i got literally yesterday evening on the 27th Eric and foolish got together and issued a formal declaration of war against the egg pyre uh and foolish you know says turns to Eric and says this is just like old times like when we took out the wither cult and Eric's like what the hell are you talking about and then foolish goes or maybe like the time we took out those mountain trolls so apparently Eric and foolish have known each other but Eric has no recollection of that occurring and that was the most recent oh, that's like lore nuts yeah that's awesome yeah it's really really cool so uh before i get to the tldr here is the most up to date map of the most populated parts of the server it, it doesn't include uh, locations like Foolish's Temple or H Bomb's Mansion, but like you get the idea. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Uh, those two missing tiles up there are um, purposely hidden because apparently there are spoilers in that area of the map. But like if you're looking at it, you can see like the canyon, the prison, Snowchester to the north, and if you look really closely, you can see all the red vines spreading out everywhere. Uh, this shit is pretty damn cool, I'd say. Look, the canyons actually pretty. Pretty, ugh, sorry, I misclicked. Um, like, Canyon's actually pretty cool um, to yeah. look at from the top like that with yeah, all the fucking, uh, yeah, with, all the with fucking the debris and the balloons cool. and the grid. It's neat. So, uh, yeah. TLDR, the Dream SMP is a Minecraft roleplay server with an extremely active fandom that is giving thousands of people comfort and entertainment in genuinely the most stressful and depressing time in much of their lives. Fuck, dude, I love Minecraft. Amazing. Yay. So proud you, of you. Do you feel caught up on Dream SMP lore? I feel very much enlightened. I've learned more information and, like, fucking actually, like, comprehended more, more of this information than I have in the past month of college. Sweet Jesus, that's <laughs> a terrible sign. Uh, our school system sucks. I'm doing really well. <laughs> I, I... Man. It's just... I've been blue screening the whole time. Oh my god, dude. No, I feel that. Uh, but yeah, if, if this gets enough views, <laughs> if we get enough Twitch clout, <laughs> we'll play Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I want more internet clout for Minecraft, dude. Let's go. Alright, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Okay. Have fun, don't fall in. I'm also very hungry. <coughs> but I fun, wanna, also I don't fall in. eat on call because I want you to have to hear the ASMR of me eating a container of Griffiths. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, for the rest of you, um, how how did you like our our descent into madness? What did Rio? What did you do? 
<laughs> I, I looked at your thing at the last minute. I missed it. Oh, has Rio been saying shit in the chat and I just can't see it? No, I accidentally uh, hit the video button on my thing with on my computer. Oh, okay. So. I, I thought you were like <laughs> doing a funny thing and I just caught it at the very end. <laughs> <laughs> nope, I just have clumsy. That's a mood. I feel you got that. them clumsy hands. And, but yeah, no, like, how do you how do you guys feel about my college lecture about the Dream SMP? That was, was like, fun. really well done, seriously. I liked, I, oh. it was, yeah, it was really well done. I, um, I was kind of zoned out for a portion of it, but that's nothing on you. That's, A, oh, I have a mental disorder that makes me super prone to zoning out, and B, I knew 90% of this. <laughs> but even, like, even yeah. as someone who knows most of this... Like, I was still having a really good time. Yeah, no, I like, think it's a good, good like, staff. refresher for everything, because, like, even going back and, like, going through all this information and rewatching some of the VODs, I'm like, oh, I forgot that, like, this event happened, yeah. and that, like, these characters have an established dynamic. Like, oh, oh, jeez. Like, yeah, like, I, did, I didn't remember, like, or at least, I don't know if I didn't remember, I didn't see, I didn't remember, like, half the half of the egg stuff. Like half the people who had been exposed to the egg. Yeah, I, the egg starts. Yeah, I didn't like, realize a the lot egg. earlier than people seem yeah. to remember it doing. Mm. Like it shows up during exile. That was fucking like December. I had no idea. Yeah, that, that's a, kind of insane. Mm. Yeah, well, because like there's there's certain because some characters seem to be like sort of semi like Tommy is immune to the egg. Mm. Techno seems to be largely immune to the egg, right? He can hear and it. then what does? Yeah, he can hear it, but, like, he doesn't seem to be, like, he's not possessed by it in any way. It doesn't really influence him. He has too many uh, noises in his head. Yeah, he has too many voices in his head. He already has too many voices in his head to give a shit about this one. Yeah. So, like, you know. And what's kind of the egg, I think the egg subplot kind of, you know. I don't want to say it gets slept on, but it's not. I think it's not super paid attention to because, yeah. like, I think Tom, Tommy, and Techno are probably the two most popular, uh, yeah, like viewpoints to most, watch. The most paid attention to perspectives, but since yeah. like mm. the egg is now currently infiltrating both of their stories, I think people will start noticing it more. Yeah, yeah, like definitely now people will, but I think for a long time, like it kind of, the egg subplot kind of got slept on. <laughs> Because it's Cause like because it's it's genuinely interesting. Yeah, because it's this weird it's parasite as fuck. In, infecting everyone and everything, and no one really yeah. knows what to do about it. Like that's me. Anyway, I think I'm um, gonna I'm gonna cease my stream now. Uh, I actually thank you have guys a for being uh, here. Could you oh, yeah. share this with us? Oh, absolutely. I will. So so at least we can view it, and then we can just snag the links of the videos off of there. Uh yeah yeah of course yeah no I'll, I'll share it with you on Drive. Um, but I am going to stop streaming for now, so um, thank you guys very, very much for being here. I appreciate your company and your feedback. I will share this with you post-haste. Good evening.